This episode is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Whether you love true crime or comedy, celebrity interviews or news, you call the shots on what's in your podcast queue. And guess what? Now you can call them on your auto insurance too with the Name Your Price tool from Progressive. It works just the way it sounds. You tell Progressive how much you want to pay for car insurance, and they'll show you coverage options that fit your budget. Get your quote today at Progressive.com to join the over 28 million drivers who trust Progressive. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Price and coverage match limited by state law. Hey, it's Doug. Suicide is something that affects all of us, and we can all play a part in saving lives. Make a difference in your community by walking out of the darkness with us on Sunday, October 13th at Fisher Pavilion at Seattle Center. Help spread awareness and understanding. Send the message that help is available and raise funds for the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. Register today at AFSP.org slash Seattle. That's AFSP.org slash Seattle. Presented by T-Mobile, the official wireless partner of Odyssey Sports. With an awesome network and great savings, there's never been a better time to join T-Mobile. Visit your neighborhood store to make the switch today. What's up? It's your boy, the Ted Smith from the Men's Room. And did you know I have a podcast? Well, I do. The Podcast. New episodes uploaded every Wednesday on the Odyssey app. Unfortunately, what you're about to hear is real. The members of this radio program are simply not that bright. Or what some people would call educated. They are merely stupid. They're not trying to offend anyone on purpose. And all have played doctors on TV. You have been warned and are cordially invited to join the party. This is the men's room. Forget it, man, and get with the countdown. Get, 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 get with the countdown. Shake this square world and blast off the kicks, Bill. Kicks. <laughs> The trippers, the grasshoppers, the hip ones, all gathered in secrecy and flying high as a kite. This is the men's room with Miles and Thrill. You know what they say, shake your radio more than three times and you're playing with it. You're listening to the men's room. And away we go. Welcome to season 19, episode number 4172. Along with Steve the Thrill Hill, the Ted Smith, Woo! and my cock. Come on. Montgomery! And you are in the men's room. On tap today, the return of Who Sucks Less. Less. We will play profile this. Plus headlines, the men's room shot of the day, fun of listener emails, and everyone's favorite. TV time with T. Click clack. Drinking the drum. All right, here we go. The commander of a Navy destroyer is now learning the full scope of his mistake. A Florida surgeon removes a patient's wrong organ and his life he did take. Meanwhile, Florida man compliments another guy's car before getting punched in the face. A neighborhood cat goes to people's homes to ransack the place. And a man duct tapes a city's tree, Steve, to keep it from falling on his house. Yeah, I read that. That is all coming on today's very special episode of The Men's Room. And now, here's the question. Hola, bitches. Good day to you and yours. All right, in a perfect world, your home is your sanctuary. The place you go to get a breather from the day-to-day stresses of reality. The world, however, is not perfect. So sometimes, even the sanctity of home goes out the window. We go to Florida, where lightning struck the pavement outside of a home which then traveled up a metal fence, shot through the ceiling of a bedroom where a one-year-old was sleeping, sending sheetrock onto the crib as the roof collapsed. The sleeping baby, absolutely fine. The house, not so much. And the same can be said for a baby and a home in Phoenix. In this case, the baby was sleeping soundly when a pickup truck plowed into the family home in the middle of the night. Somehow, the baby once again avoided injury. And maybe it's a Phoenix thing, because a different vehicle slammed into a different house, narrowly missing the couple who'd been eating dinner. But that pales in comparison to the situation outside of Portland. In that case, the vehicle that crashed into a home was a twin-engine Cessna, and it actually crashed into three homes, setting one of them on fire, but sending all the residents of all three homes fleeing. But it's all not 
lightning strikes and vehicles crashing. That's harshing the home vibes. We have the story of a couple who watched a stranger kick in their back door and take a shower of their home. And they got to watch it all through their security app because they weren't home at the time. And we have a man who came home to a bobcat lounging on a dog bed in his living room. Another man came home to a deer that had already totaled his house and only made things worse. And then there's a family in Kentucky. They just want to know who keeps pooping on the front porch because they'd like you to stop. So who is pooping on the front porch? That's a fair question. And we have a question for you today, taking all of these things into account. Look, man, you've been home, and home could be a house, an apartment. It could be in a van down by the river. It could be a tent. It doesn't matter. <laughs> you just want to chill out because you're finally home, and then something goes terribly wrong in your home. And that's what today's question is. Today, we want to know, what is the craziest thing that's happened in the comfort of your own home? To be a part of the big show, call 206-803-ROCK. Like The Men's Room on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Men's Room Live, and send those emails to the men's room at KISW.com. This episode is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Whether you love true crime or comedy, celebrity interviews or news, you call the shots on what's in your podcast queue. And guess what? Now you can call them on your auto insurance, too, with the Name Your Price tool from Progressive. It works just the way it sounds. You tell Progressive how much you want to pay for car insurance, and they'll show you coverage options that fit your budget. Get your quote today at Progressive.com to join the over 28 million drivers who trust Progressive. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Price and coverage match limited by state law. Hey, it's Doug. Suicide is something that affects all of us, and we can all play a part in saving lives. Make a difference in your community by walking out of the darkness with us on Sunday, October 13th at Fisher Pavilion at Seattle Center. Help spread awareness and understanding. Send the message that help is available and raise funds for the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. Register today at AFSP.org slash Seattle. That's AFSP.org slash Seattle. Presented by T-Mobile, the official wireless partner of Odyssey Sports. With an awesome network and great savings, there's never been a better time to join T-Mobile. Visit your neighborhood store to make the switch today. Room with miles and thrill. 99.9. K-I-S-W. Oh, but y'all, away we go. Welcome to season 19, episode number 4,172. What a large and in charge program we have for you today. Guaranteed future repeat. Exciting return of Who Sucks Less. Steve, I don't know how you do it. You find uh, three stories every week from the news of people just doing dumb crap and often getting in trouble for it. It's up to us to determine out of the three stories, situationally, which one sucks the least. Is there a theme this week to Who Sucks Less? Uh, no real theme, just people sucking. You know, a bit of an overreaction from uh, the authorities in San Diego. A kid wants an iPhone a little too much, given just, the circumstances. And uh, look, nobody likes a crying baby on a plane, but just deal with it. Just, yes, just kind yeah. of situations that were handled poorly is the way I'm looking at this one. Yeah, that's, a, I mean, uh, I mean, that's it, probably true of all weeks. Yes, yeah. general sucking. General yeah, sucking, yeah. yeah. All right, yeah, general sucking. couple of uh, programming notes before we get into the show for you. Uh, don't forget, if you're wanting to go to the Halloween Hullabaloo Sunday night, uh, October 13th, as we head on down to Kent and the Showwear Center for Godsmack, Hailstorm, The Warning, and Flat Black. Your chance to get four tickets for the low, low price of $99.99. Just head to KISW.com. Get four of your friends in for 100 bucks. So there you go. It's uh, just that easy. Hopefully, we will figure out a way down at the Showwear Center to get you the Men's Room IPA from Black Raven Brewing. I think that'd be a fantastic that idea. That's a very good idea. That has got to be uh, that's got to be something that we uh, that we work on. We'll have some updated locations for you on uh, those locations with a new beer as well. Oh, oh, what other programming note? Uh, if you did not know, and we kind of found out yesterday, somewhat of a surprise to us, but ladies and gentlemen, uh, taking over the night shift right after the Men's Room, the lovely Jolene is back. No. Yes. So, Jolene's been here for, blah, golly, decades, whatever the deal was. A hot minute, Miles. Yeah, it's been a, a hot minute. But uh, she took a little break, and uh, she's coming back, and she's taking over the nighttime show. So, uh, exciting news. Uh, if you listen in the evenings, that uh, Jolene is back on the airwaves, driving home last night. Great to hear her on the air. Yeah. Again, we were unsure if it had officially had gone down, if she was ready to go or not yesterday. But uh, apparently got to good she news. was. Yeah. And she was. Uh, <laughs> she was rocking with us last night. So uh, that is pretty cool. So we're excited to have uh, Jolene back today on the question. We're going to talk about things that uh, happen in. 
the comfort of your own home. You go to work, you deal with the craziness, you know, you, you look for one place to have a little peace, just a, your own little sanctuary, a, a place where you can relax, feel comfortable. All your things are there. But that does not mean that weird things still don't go on in your domicile. And as you said, Steve, whether that was an apartment you lived in with a few buddies, whether that was a house, whether that was the house you lived in growing up, often weird things happen in your home. And we head to Kentucky as we start with this story. The Louisville porch pooper is clearly, as they say, on a high-fiber diet because he struck two more times since going viral late last week. According to news outlets, the homeowner, speaking on a condition of anonymity, says the repeat reliever hit his porch two more times for a late-night dump over the long weekend, bringing the total to six times. Damn. That he has gone number two. <laughs> On this guy's porch. Or technically one number 12. The first of the three most incidents occurred on September 1st, and the homeowner told the outlet he's taking matters into his own hands, putting out cat litter and loud sonic speakers <laughs> to scare the man off. Uh, hard to say if this is working, because the resident says the delinquent defecator did run off pretty frightened after the September 2nd poop, though it really didn't stop him from still dropping the load. Now, video of the individual went viral on social media last week after he allegedly dropped a steaming dump on the homeowner's porch several nights in a row. Uh, compounding the confusion, homeowner says, I don't even know who this guy is. I don't recognize the guy and, and can't think of any reason why he would torment him in this way. Louisville police are investigating, asking the public to help identify and report the serial esser. Their words, not ours, on Facebook. <laughs> well, at that point, you forgive him. Uh, but they're hoping that uh, cops will maybe catch his scent and uh, wipe this uh, case off the books. So I mean, on. technically, they have his DNA. They do have that. Yes. Yeah. I mean, if you're not in the system, it doesn't matter. But if you've done anything and you're in the system, like, you can his take face, a turn. His face is clear as day on two or three different oh, really? videos. You can okay. see, if you know this individual, you are not going to have a problem saying, I know that guy. That's Jeff. I know where he lives. I've worked with him. I went to school with him. Yes, he's in the neighborhood. Yes, he's really got to go. I don't know what the deal is. But yes, in fact, six times he is dumped on this guy's front porch. And the homeowner has no idea why. Now, we head a little bit south of Kentucky. God, that pissed me off. Into the great state of Tennessee. And a couple have been I mean, left what, in shock. What, yeah. I'm just I, saying, and look, there's a million things you don't want people to do your house, right? You can spray paint graffiti on the house. If there's a message, you understand the motivation. You don't want someone robbing your house, but I understand the motivation. Just pooping at my front door six times, like, come on, man. Yep, yep. I, just, I can't make sense of that, mm -hmm. and therefore I have to hate you. Oh, this one happened uh, thanks to the security app that they have on their phone and the system in their home. Last Saturday, Kerrigan Nardi and her husband were out enjoying a lovely late-night dinner. At around 7, they received an alert from their home security system that there was movement in their home. The Nashville couple initially thought nothing of it, presuming that one of their dogs maybe set off the sensor. However, what they saw next sent a chill down their spines. The Nardis watched in horror Nardis. as the security camera showed a stranger kick down their back door and start rummaging through their home. Bizarrely, the man then hopped in the shower for a quick scrub. Now, the couple <laughs> called 911 as they fretted over their dogs who were in the home at the time. Our fur babies are there. There's a man in our house we don't know. We just need to get home. When law enforcement arrived at the Nardi's home, they found the man, later identified as Sam Smith. That's it? The Sam Smith? Sam Smith. All right. Like the singer? Sitting on the couch donning nothing but a towel around his waist. He was then arrested by police and charged with aggravated criminal trespassing, possession of meth as well, according okay. to the arrest affidavit. Oh, that explains it. He mm -hmm. was uh, mm -hmm. naked and sitting on our couch. Do you want to keep that couch? Nope, gone. No. Gone. Does it matter uh, what the... Is it a leather couch? Is it a cloth couch? Leather, I might be able to salvage, right? I can get his gunk off, but like if, it, if it's... You're saying no, Mike? It's leather. Everything's just pooled on I, top. I know, but I would not be able to get the image and the just notion of his naked butt on my couch. Well, just don't head. sit yeah. on that cushion. You Thank know what I mean? Like it's a hard to do, all. though, yes. man. I will get up in the morning. I sleep naked. I get up in the morning. I go downstairs and make myself a cup of coffee. I'm naked. That's why I'm not on your couch. Correct. 
I do not sit on my furniture naked. Mm-hmm. I have no problem sleeping in my bed naked. Don't I don't That's ask me what, don't ask me why I draw the line. Uh, <laughs> but I I don't I just don't plop down on the couch naked ever for any reason. It would seem odd to sit on your couch naked. Yeah. I think part of the difference is you know you wash your sheets. You okay. wash yep. your yep. sofa yep. if something happens to it, like mm-hmm. your butt juice or you spill Kool Aid yep. or wine. That, but otherwise, like nobody's really washing their couch. Like if I butt sweat on my sheets. I yeah. do other things in my bed, uh, trust me. Okay. Uh, but they go to the washer. The towel's a goner, right? Yeah, the towel's gone. The towel's a goner. I mean, that's not even a towel that you dry your car with. I mean, you don't, no, even, you don't no, make that, that a garage gone. towel. I mean, that, nope. that, that thing is gone. It's that, out of the that is a trash towel now. Because that's where my uh, towels go to the dry, uh, to die and to dry my car. Yeah, yeah. they make the way to the garage. They end up in the garage for me. My, they see. start with me, then they move to the guest bedroom, and then at some point, uh, they end up garage the guest towels. bedroom, yes, garage There's towel. There's a life of a Dog towel. Dog poop. Right? Yeah, life of a towel. Yeah. I mean, that, the yeah. towel knows it's getting to the end of its years. Once it gets moments, frayed. Once it ends up in a garage, it's... Uh, it's I'm thinking, no, it knows when it's you on its stop last leg. drying yourself with it. But you dry other things that you don't mind getting grease or any of those Because something things. spilled on the floor. And the towel's like, I, I used to be your body buddy. Right. Now I'm on the floor. Now I'm, yeah. I'm cleaning up dog vomit. Right. Uh, you we don't, have towels for that. You don't violate people like that. It doesn't matter what kind of psychosis you're in. I don't care, said the homeowner. <laughs> I don't care what kind of drugs you're on. Not my business. But you don't break into people's homes and violate them that way. Yeah. That sounds like a very Tennessee thing to say. Hey, man, you mind yours. Yeah. But just don't come in my home naked and sit on my couch. And that's really all the guys saying. Live and let live. Just yeah. live outside of my home. The Nordics had explained how they're, uh, they have since disinfected the rooms mm-hmm. that the man entered. They threw away the towel he used, and they bleached their shower following the break-in. But the cleanup process hasn't been so easy for the couple. As he was taking a shower in my home, he left some excrement behind. <laughs> oh, no, man. I guess he just thought that would be a nice present for the homeowners, I suppose. <laughs> Rattled by the terrifying incident... The couple have since taken further measures to keep their home safe, installing a deadbolt lock and placing a barricade on their door to position it when they leave. They are also planning to install more cameras around their property and are encouraging their neighbors to do the same. I think that people need to just get cameras and be careful because you never know. I will say this. I have thought on numerous occasions, just based on the neighborhood that I live in, Mm -hmm. that it would probably be a pretty good idea to put security cameras outside of my home. And I am thoroughly convinced... That if I do that and I realize what really goes on in my neighborhood, then I want to sell my house. Yeah, I don't want to know. I don't want to know. Unless there's something that's absolutely physically wrong or someone tries to Well, you've in. caught somebody pooping in your yard, haven't you? I have. But that was, uh, that was during, that was a Fremont uh, meeting season call around 2 a.m. <laughs> right. So there was woos. Uh, then I got to go. Then I'll duck in here. And then, of course, it was the summertime, so my windows were open at the time. You could hear everything as if the conversation was taking place. In your bedroom. In right? my bedroom. And I remember my wife screaming, Miles, wake up! There's a person essing in our front yard! What do I do? And I said, I don't know. Throw them toilet paper. Yeah, I mean, we Cause stop I didn't know, pooping in my yard! I didn't know the answer, and I'm not getting up, and I'll just figure it out tomorrow. I've got a poop bag. I've got a hose. I don't know. But did you I, poop bag human poop? I would or did the I, chick split? Well, I mean, I with a dog bag, I would. I would do dog poop in the dog bag. I would, look, what I would I do? Leave it other, there? No, I would take a shovel and fling it in the street. Listen, the, the, the people you just talked about in Tennessee, the guy, he took a shower, but also mm-hmm. he took a poop in the shower. All right. Now, at that point, that is when I call professional cleaners. Yeah. Like other stuff I can kind of deal with, but when it comes to someone else's poop that is not my child, mm-hmm. like... I'm not, I'm not dealing with I'm not cleaning that up, but obviously I want to use my shower. So I'm in a bit of a predicament, but like, and I know me and a wife would fight and be like, look, I know you don't want to spend the money on a professional cleaner for something that we can do ourselves. Right. But if you're not doing it, I'm not doing it. I don't know this guy. His turd is sitting in my shower. We've already burned the sofa. We've thrown away the towel. We're not going to redo the entire bathroom, but I'm not cleaning that up, man. Right. Like yeah, I'm calling someone. That would someone, be a tough one. Yeah, it depends how much it is, right? You can have your typical public bathroom, oops, I pooped a little too much, I can live with that. But if he's just dropping heaters in there, I I, I just, I refuse. Yep. I absolutely refuse. Now we have the story of a Phoenix family uh, picking up the pieces of their home after a pickup truck on Sunday plowed into their home. They say they're investigating the crash that happened in the neighborhood about 3.30 in the morning. I think that tells you everything you need to know. 
Uh, Jose Rojo said the crash woke his entire family up. I'm hearing screeches and I heard a big thump. It shakes the house. It was kind of like a little earthquake. He said the truck crashed into their bathroom and the baby's room. He was kind of close to hitting the baby. So we just freaked out to see if anything happened to her. The house did suffer significant damage. He's just lucky and feeling good that his family was not hurt. It could have been much worse. This could happen to anybody. What a coincidence. It happened to us. His house, by the way, is now boarded up. And they're trying to figure out if there's any way that they can maintain themselves in the residence. But they might end up in a hotel for a little while. Uh, police said the driver was taken to the hospital with injuries. And the cause is still unknown. Now, this reminds me of something that happened with my buddy Jeff when we were in high school. Back to the Dodge Omni. I know your family had one. He mm-hmm. had one as well. Uh for some, Jeff had a huge sassafras tree in his backyard. Now, one of the things you can do with sassafras, believe it or not, is make a delicious sun tea. The idea is you put the leaves in a pitcher glass of uh, yeah, uh, glass a pitcher, pitcher right? so the sun can, can get through. You set it outside. You put some cellophane on top. In two days, honest to God, you have some of the most delicious tea you've ever had in your life. So it is really good stuff. And... I think he did like a project with it for school or whatever. But then as soon as he realized how good this tea was, he just wanted to keep making it because backyard, free tree, I can do this. Not a big deal. Jeff is driving to school on the day that he is supposed to submit his project for like, I think it was home ec or whatever the hell we were doing, right? He's going around a curve in the Dodge Omni. There are two homes. (laughs) In between the homes are where one neighbor had stacked an entire wall of firewood for the season. Yeah. All right, so it's on the perimeter between the two homes. It's also beside the road. Jeff goes around the curve, and the tea that he had, which was cellophane top, still in the glass pitcher, with a rubber band about it around the top, tips over in the passenger side floor. Jeff reaches down to grab that handle real quick to right in the pitcher. As he does so, the car veers left right. and smashes into the cord of wood that's closest to the street. Mm. When he hits the cord of wood, like Jenga, a log shoots out from the middle of the cord. He does not knock the cord of wood over. He just punched it out. Right. You know, like stacking blocks at a bar, right? Shoots this thing through the air. It goes through a window in the home, hits the wall, and drops. Now, the homeowner comes flying out. <laughs> to see what the hell's going on, realizes what had happened, runs back into the home. That was their nursery. Oh. That log shot through the window, smashed the window, went over the top of the crib. Uh, Fortunately, no glass was in the crib. Hit the wall behind where, like, the changing station was for the baby and dropped on the table where you change your kid. Damn. A split piece of wood did that damage and threw 25 feet in the air. To hit that shot, right? So she goes running in. She's frantic. He hears all this, but he does not know exactly what happened because he was not, he did not see that log shoot through. He kinda, right, the wood is still there. The car is out of stock. He just got a car accident. He just got a car accident. The wood is still standing. He just smacked into it as hard as he could, but he doesn't realize what happened. As he comes into the yard, he sees that the window's broken. And the woman comes out and said, are you okay? Yes, hold on. I just, you know, I, I need to help make sure my baby's okay. And Jeff's like, oh, my, oh, my God. <laughs> right. <laughs> and then he could look through the window as she's talking to him and see what exactly had happened as she hands the log through the window back to him <laughs> to put on the pile. Uh, Jeff is incredibly. I like that she has the presence of mind. But, and, baby, if you could, put, please put that back with the rest put of the, that on yeah. the Put that on the pile. I'm still going to need it when it gets cold. Yeah. So, not only did he crash his quote-unquote mother's car that she gave him, he ruins a window to the house, uh, breaks that window, spills his project all over his car, which also, you know, right. now he can't get a grade for that. But, I mean, just if you saw how small this window was in this home, because it was like, it wasn't a bedroom window. It was more like a little bathroom size window. Yeah. So, I mean, it wasn't a bedroom, but the window itself was maybe two by a foot so and he put it through there he just put it straight through that window man and then it crashed down on the changing table that could have been so much worse that was just i mean it was a one in a million shot didn't hit the side nothing (laughs) what uh what is the craziest thing that uh has happened in the comfort of your own home 206-803-ROCK 
You're working from home. You settle in with a cup of coffee, ready to get the day started. Before you look at that to-do list, turn on your favorite Odyssey Sports Station on your smart speaker. We'll keep you company and bring you the latest updates from your teams while you tackle your inbox or get ready for another meeting that probably could have been an email. Power through the workday with the entertaining sports coverage you love from the local voices you trust. Just ask your smart speaker to play your favorite station. 99.9 KISW. The shenanigans continue. This is the men's room with Miles and Thrill. What is the craziest thing that happened in uh, the comfort of your own home? 206 803 Rockets. We head to Spring, Texas. Harris County Precinct 4 Constable's Office took a deer into custody on Sunday. Took a deer into custody. Released it after the animal broke into a home. The homeowner said the deer not only broke in, but stayed overnight. I walked in the house, opened my pantry, opened the door, and right there, kind of past where my stove is, there's a deer just staring at me. According to Courtney Hawk, recalling what happened after coming home from spending the night at her boyfriend's. After surveying her home, she realized the deer had gone through one of the front windows. He just made himself an interest. He kind of Kool-Aid manned right through my front window. (laughs) She came to find out the neighbors witnessed the breaking and entering. Hawk said in the deer's defense, she was told a buck was chasing it. I came back around 5 p.m. Sunday evening, so it's almost a full 24 hours that he was just hanging out. The uh, deer's hard launch into the home left him injured and bleeding making it pretty easy for Hawk to tell where he'd been. Everywhere all over the house. Bloodstains from the floor to the walls to the couch. Well, deputies tried to get the deer to leave on its own. But the deer ran into the bathroom during the first attempt. So deputies tried to knock on the window to scare it out of the house. But she said that that agitated the deer. Hawk said they still had to call the sheriff's office and their livestock unit. The game plan, according to Hawk, to shoot the deer with a tranquilizer gun. Uh, she said that uh, she came around uh, from an angle and saw the tail end of the deer sticking out right here. And the deer was just staring at itself in the mirror in the bathroom. Oh, who's a good-looking boy? Who's and a so good-looking boy? And so she had uh, uh, basically a good shot of the hindquarters uh, to give a nice little dose of what they called the sleepy juice. <laughs> sleepy <laughs> juice, yes. A video taken on her cell phone showed the moment when the deer's wild weekend at home came to an end. Uh, they said the deer was given an antidote to reverse the tranquilizer then was set free. He did destroy property, but Hawk said she will not be pressing charges. Nope. Uh, I all things considered, I think the damage could have been worse. So our question, what is the craziest thing that happened in the comfort of your own home? 206-803-ROCK. Uh, you had the story earlier of a family in Tennessee. I guess the guy broke in, took a shower. When the cops got there, he was sitting on the couch, wrapped up in the towel. Naked. All right, we said, look, man, if it's me, you, whatever. I'm getting rid of the towel. I just am. Maybe the couch, depending on the material, but certainly the towel. So someone here says... It must be nice to have enough money that you can disregard a good bath towel just because it was around the waist of somebody who just took a shower, even though they broke into your house. Money is not an option. A, a, a ten twenty dollar towel is not going to break the bank if someone's naked in my towel. No, we are we are rolling in dough. So much money, and I'm saying this for all of us. I could buy a new bath towel. I could walk into Target right now. I could buy myself a bath towel. Or how much are they spending on a towel? I don't know. Obviously, this person's living much better than we are. But, uh, yeah, I don't know what kind of bath towels you're using, homie, but uh, maybe dial it back. But, yes, we can afford... Egyptian cotton. We can afford <laughs> bath towels. So, thank you on the congrats to that, yes. After That's, 20 years here, Ted. 20 you know, years? We're going, we're going to Bed Bath & Beyond. We're taking that coupon finally. <laughs> Buying a bath towel. 10% off coupon. Because we are rolling deep, bitches. Got to find one. Some people want a Rolls Royce. Yeah, don't get them anymore. Hell with that. Mm-hmm. I'm getting a bath towel. Yeah, you nailed it, bro. <laughs> Hello, Robert. Welcome to the men's room. Hola. 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 You know what? I think I might go out and get myself a bath towel. You Don't know. No. No. You're just wasting hey, money, hey, man. Hey, hey, You're hey. just wasting money. Quit flexing on the show, man. I know. Jeez, a whiz. <laughs> okay. Anyway, so um, the weirdest thing happened was we had a party. The party hadn't even started to get up, and our friend of ours came over. Uh, he had always been into things. Anyways, kind of long story short, he comes over, he's sitting enjoying a beer, and he half slices over, like just starts, you know, passing out. So they call an aid car. The aid car comes in and takes his vials and goes, oh, well, we're going to have to call a second aid car. And so the second aid car comes and shows up at our party. And they're like, well, you know, this is kind of substances that uh, we shouldn't be talking about. I'm going to have to call my uh, 
my supervisors. So three more cop cars show up, all to just get the story from us that, that this guy showed up out of nowhere, passed out, and then woke up a couple of hours later. Uh, they take him into custody, custody, get him back up on his feet. But the point of the fact is, is like, at a party I had, hadn't even started, I had five police vehicle or five aid vehicles and well, are, like, you about, like, e- are you talking about like are you talking about like emts is that what you're saying by an aid vehicle uh yeah like uh, an ambulance two yeah. ambulances right. and okay. three sheriffs is right. that now as someone who's never had that many people show up before my party has even started is that uh is that a harbinger of good things like hey this party's going to be off the chart or is it a uh, an omen of bad things well, the party was kind of it, it was it was it was a standard party. So I mean, there wasn't really anything after that. But people were talking about it on my social media for about you know another <laughs> three weeks. Did what you, drugs was yeah, this did guy? You find on? out what happened to him. Uh, apparently, he was on uh, a be- a mixture of acid and PCP. Oh All wow! Right. Wow! All right. That's well, I got what I, I would mix I together. Can, I can tell you, it wasn't the acid. Yeah, <laughs> I can. Yeah, no, absolutely. Huh. All right. How long ago was this? Uh, this was uh, about, I'd say, 15 years ago. And sadly, he, the guy um, OD'd and nobody was there to stop him about two years ago. So, Oh, man. So he, he never could stop. No, no. He, he was addicted. He fell down that rabbit hole years ago and nobody could pull him out. Yeah, okay. PCP is like, even people that do other hard drugs are like, I don't know. Is that an PCP. addictive drug? PCP? Yeah. I believe, having not done it, I don't know, but I've never, heard, drugs. I've never heard someone go on like a week long bender. It's always an incident, but is that a, well, I mean, is that a drug P- you can take on the norm? I, yeah. I mean, if people smoke PCP, they just probably do it all the time. Okay. I guess. Right. It's just not that big of a drug. It's not that big of a drug. And like, you know, most of the stories we see. Uh, even when we play, I'll profile this, right? And you do the drugs category. There's some telltale signs, but I feel like with PCP, the tell is at some point they are naked, they're super aggressive, and they tolerate pain better than anybody. You know, right. took eight yeah. cops to take one dude down. Or they had to tase them 15 freaking times or whatever the hell it is. Uh, the only party I've been to was a, a college party at a larger house, and they had kind of a... This was an older home, and they, the ceilings are probably, t- t- geez, 10 feet. You know, mm-hmm. just one of those older homes. And so the the party was kind of taking place in the living room slash adjacent dining room, which was not a dining room because everyone's 20 years old. It was kind of more of an open air uh, area where people put their boxes and crap. Uh, At some point in time during the night, uh, one of the guys got into an argument with somebody else. He pulls out a gun and he starts shooting into the ceiling. Yep. Now, everybody is in the home at the time. So people go scattering. But... There are also people upstairs who are in individual bedrooms doing their own thing. Smoking weed, talking, listening to yeah. music, whatever. And I mean, I'm not kidding you. Six six bullets up into the up yeah. into the ceiling of a home that still had two more floor one regular size floor and then like an attic bedroom on yeah, top. Yeah. And you could see where the bullets went through the ceiling. You could see where they came up through the hardwood floor. Mm-hmm. On the second floor, and then apparently stopped into the second floor st- ceiling because they did not make it to the third floor. Okay, but that was that was the first time where the cops were not. Hey, turn down the volume. <laughs> right, right. It was it was more than that. It was like, hey, we we need to do an investigation. That guy took off on foot, and no one really knew who he was. So I don't think they ever were able to track him down. Like somebody like said, like his name's Mark. But they didn't know anything else more about him, so I don't know that right. he was ever prosecuted for that. But that was like, I was like, dude, there are people up there. Like, how did you, why would you think, you know, like, just to scare Because yeah, you're not thinking. What, uh, what's the craziest thing that's <laughs> happened in the comfort of your own home? 206-803-ROCK. Right, you said you were high school or college? College. Yeah. I mean, look, I remember being in high school parties. Same thing, people would, like, shoot guns or whatever, but, like, not inside so much. I only saw it inside, well, heard it inside once. Right. And we were outside. But same thing, like, dude just shot it off, like, up in the air. But I don't know. I mean, hell, I couldn't tell you at that time or now whose house it was or whatever. So nope, it's like, but it's time to go. Right. Oh, no, just that's right. We left. Is- but nobody else was, like, nobody's going to get caught for right. it. Yeah. Like a house party, that's the equivalent of the closing time tune at the bar. Mm-hmm. Like, okay, time to go. You don't have to go home, but you don't want to stay here. That is for sure. What uh, what is the craziest thing that's happened in the comfort of your own home? Two zero six eight zero three rock. Hello, Chad. Welcome to the men's room. Hola, hola. So I fell asleep on a work night one night 
about 11 o'clock at night, I got somebody just wailing on my front door. I get up, go to the front door, and my gun safe is close to the front door, so I grab a gun and go to open it as my front window is broken. I go outside and point the gun at the perpetrator, and it's a female. I'm going, what is going on? She says, they're trying to kill me. They're trying to kill me. I'm just, who is? As I step back in the door, not knowing if it's a setup or not. And she, uh, I said, come in. She got, I come in. I said, who's trying to kill you? She, they're trying to kill me in my head. I, oh, no. Call 911. <laughs> and she just trying to advance towards me. I said, get on the ground. Get on the ground. She said, shoot me. Kill me. Oh, just shoot me. Kill oh, me. Boy. Yeah. As I'm thinking, as I keep backing up, she backs me into the into my uh, dining room, and I got a small partition between the dining room and the kitchen. And she gets me going around that about three times. So on the third time, I uh, I sat there and pulled one of the kids the dining table chairs out, and she had to bend down to move it over. And so I spun around and grabbed the uh, barrel of the pistol and cracked her twice on the head and knocked her out. <laughs> Jesus! Good wow, God, man. This is just a regular old eleven o'clock night. Yep. Did they? Did you? Okay. So, like, what happens at? What's yeah, the follow up yeah. to this? Did you find out what was going uh, on? The, 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 the cops show up, and well, you get handcuffed because I had a pistol. I told nine one one I had a gun on him, and you get handcuffed for a minute, and then they let me loose because you know it was her, and apparently she was. I heard them say that she only lived like eight doors down, and that she was off her meds. And that her husband didn't even know she was gone. He was in with his headphones on playing Xbox. Oh, my God. <laughs> he may have known she, she was gone, but he's she, like, so, I'm not so, dealing with this, so man. So based on the fact that she, she she looked like a normal human being. I mean, sometimes you can tell when people are having a hard time or not. Yeah. But she did not no, look like someone who was, you know, like going off the deep end. Other than the fact that she wasn't on her meds. Mm. You nope, know, not at all. She wasn't looking like she was strung out or anything like that. So that that had to make nope. it that that would have to make it even worse in a way, because situationally you can't comprehend what's really happening. Yeah, it doesn't exactly. make any sense. Yeah, I mean, if some meth addict's going to try to break into my home, I got an idea that they're probably you know on something based on their mannerisms and their behavior. Sure. Yeah. But, yeah. The the cops commended me for not shooting her. <laughs> what about her husband? I don't know. Never talked to him. Never met him. Well, but you're eight doors I mean, down. Did yeah. you ever see them again? No. Never and did. No knock on the door. No apology. No nothing. Hey, I'm nothing. sorry. But nothing. Nothing. Okay. See, never if this was my family member. I, yeah. I, 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 as, if this is my family member in any way, shape, or form. A guest coming in from out of town. A friend of mine. Whoever the hell it is. I am walking down the street. I am knocking on your door. I am apologizing profusely and letting you know situationally what happened, how that person is doing, uh, to apologize to you personally as a neighbor, and just explain the fact is that, that I'm sorry. Is that what it would take? Because you, that's you, just what I would do. I'm saying you had a relative visiting who who uh, sprayed diarrhea at the neighbor's house. But this I isn't Louisville. Rec- I know, but still, you could have gone down, knocked on the door, and said, Did you hey. knock on their door? <laughs> I know there's a lot of poop oh, outside of your house. Oh. So I want to let you know. I didn't break in the house. It was not me. See, I think I'd be more apt to go down and be like, hey, sorry they pooped on your house. <laughs> okay. And for some reason, <laughs> no, I'm dating no, a terrible. woman that loses her marbles and goes down and knocks on my neighbor's door, and he's got a cracker in the head. Like, I don't know. If, like, I don't know if I'm going down to apologize for that Really? One. You take the poop over the, the break-in? I, I yes. feel more comfortable with the break I can spray it break-in. off my house. For that guy, he's right. I... Like, you're standing there, and somebody's that whacked out. Like, that's scary. I don't care if it's a chick or not. That's scary for him, too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I feel like I'd apologize, because we live eight doors down, right? So there's a chance. I mean, she's back on her meds. Maybe you're getting in your car, and you see her. Obviously, you don't have a high opinion of her, so I just want to apologize in advance and kind of explain, like, she takes the meds. The poop on the side of the house, like, you don't know it's me, okay? So even even if we make eye contact, same morning you're getting in your car, you're no wiser, and I could be there with my wife, right? It doesn't matter. You don't know that we're the ones who pooped on Plus, the house. And I know that because if yeah. you knew it was me and you saw me, I am confident you would address the me. Neighbor the neighbor is now just going to know me to be the person who claims <laughs> that, I don't know, a, bro- a brother-in-law someone else pooped, pooped all over his house. Right. And I, but that's the face. I'm the face. <laughs> I'm the face of that behavior. 
So now I'm the only one. Like, it's different because he knows the woman who broke into the home. Yeah. yeah so yeah. I'm going to go down there and apologize on her behalf. Now, the guy I'm just talking to now, he doesn't know what this guy looks like. He doesn't even know if I'm telling him the truth. I'm the one apologizing from someone else pooping on his house. Sure. That seems weird. So, like, he's Well, because someone pooped on his house is weird, but... I- I'd be apt to believe you. If you knocked on my door and said, hey, I know you noticed this massive spray of diarrhea on the side of your house. And it was. Yes, I did. Funny you bring it up. And you said, look, it wasn't me, but I would believe you only because why else would you possibly knock on my door to say, I know there's poop on the side of your house. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you came down to tell me that, I'd be inclined to believe that you're telling me the truth. I don't want to be the face Because I'd have to say to my wife, like... It, my brother pooped on the side of the house. Yeah, look, man. The neighbor came down, says it was not him. I did not suspect it was him. Said it was his, this relative, whoever it might be. And I go, okay, I believe him. We'll figure it out. Like I believe you. So I, I would not go down and do that myself. But I do think the neighbor would believe you, but still be super angry. I live right beside this person. Right. I, I'm going to see. I saw them all the time. So no, I don't want to be the guy. Who walks the dog by their house, knowing damn well <laughs> this was a like next door? Next yes, door. you know, I, it's right beside where I lived. I mean, I am not. I don't. I'm not. This is under the rug, man. I am not going over there. I'm sorry. I'm sorry this happened, <laughs> right. but it was not me. And this is a grown ass adult who was in his own right mind. Yeah, well, this that's was not true. somebody not on meds or so effed up. He he just couldn't make it to the bathroom. <laughs> so accidents happen. But that ain't on me, man. That kid who broke the vase, he's four years old. Accidents happen. Sure. Still not on me. If I'm the parent, yeah, I feel a little bit bad, but still not on me. I'm I'm just, not on me. But you would apologize to the guy that called. Yes. Because it was... But but that's not on you either. Yeah, that's not on you either. But that was someone who was staying with me in my home. Okay. So, but I... I, That's your kid that you took into the museum. No, no, no. Hang she on, though. The wind, that, you blow, blow, broke a window and then came in and chased him around the damn kitchen. <laughs> I'm not chair. saying it's awesome. I know. I'm just saying, like, I, I think that's a little bit more severe than pooping on the outside of someone's house. <sighs> it is. But I feel like residual, I'll put it this way. Oh, it was when a lot he too. was telling the and story. It, it wasn't a little bit. When he was telling the story, it was a little bit. he chuckled sometimes when he was making up certain points, right? This happened, and he chuckled a little bit, which means. On some level, as we, as most of us do after bad experiences, you start finding the funny side of things. Sure. Whoever's house got pooped, they're never going to laugh about it. They're never. They're, that's one of those things where they never go, <laughs> the funniest thing okay. happened. All right, look. Somebody sprayed diarrhea on my house. Like, this guy. There's more. Because okay. here's the thing. He has a story. It is interesting. So he can find elements to laugh at. He finds out who this woman is and what her deal. The poop on the side of the house, I, there's no story. It's just... I came home, I looked at my house, and someone spread. There's no ha-ha ever. Like, this guy will be angry about it when he's 90. Two other interests, well, two things that that you need to know about this. First of all, we were coming back from the Pacific Inn. Uh, The walk was not that far. It was maybe a quarter of a mile. Maybe at the most, uphill, up Stonewell, uh, Stoneway. It was about 9.30 at night, 10 o'clock at night. It is dark. I knew what he did. But I cannot see. I know what you did last I cannot summer. see what he had done. All right? So I. Did you just assume it was in the grass at least? I, I knew he was leaning up against the house. I just did not know what had happened. <laughs> I knew what he was doing. Right. I did not know what had happened happened. Right? Okay. So the next day, as I'm walking the dogs, I see what was actually done <laughs> that night. Because it's dark. I right. could not see what he'd done. And I mean, it was exactly explosive and everything you think it is. <laughs> you don't sneak. So, you don't sneak over in cover of darkness with like a bucket of water and right. just toss it on the side of the so house. So, Mike, I go to work the next day. All right, he's staying in my home. I get home. It's about seven o'clock at night, and I walk in the house, and it's just me and him because I think at the time the wife was off with her friends. And he says, "Hey, man, um, do you have an extra towel?" And I was like. Oh, you mean, yeah. Oh, I was like, dude, because I typically put a towel and a washcloth in the guest bathroom, shower. I did not. I forgot to do that. This is the next day. This is the next day, almost into the evening. He hadn't showered. He hadn't showered. (sighs) 
So even though he did what he did, God. he didn't really clean I it. was gone all day long. You could have found a towel in the house. <laughs> you know, the closet that you just open and look and see, are there sheets and towels in here? You can find that. So you he can... waited until it got bad enough for him. It, just, it, it didn't really matter to him. That's disgusting. That's what I was. I was like, after that, I was like, oh, God. Oh, my God. You got to go. Like, oh, my God. Back <laughs> to the town. You didn't need to leave. You got to go. I couldn't. I couldn't do it. Family. Oh, what's the craziest thing that's happened in the comfort of your own home? 206-803-ROCK. This episode is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Whether you love true crime or comedy, celebrity interviews or news, you call the shots on what's in your podcast queue. And guess what? Now you can call them on your auto insurance, too, with the Name Your Price tool from Progressive. It works just the way it sounds. You tell Progressive how much you want to pay for car insurance, and they'll show you coverage options that fit your budget. Get your quote today at Progressive.com to join the over 28 million drivers who trust Progressive. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Price and coverage match limited by state law. Hey, it's Doug. Suicide is something that affects all of us, and we can all play a part in saving lives. Make a difference in your community by walking out of the darkness with us on Sunday, October 13th at Fisher Pavilion at Seattle Center. Help spread awareness and understanding. Send the message that help is available and raise funds for the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. Register today at AFSP.org slash Seattle. That's AFSP.org slash Seattle. Hey, it's Doug. Suicide is something that affects all of us, and we can all play a part in saving lives. Make a difference in your community by walking out of the darkness with us on Sunday, October 13th at Fisher Pavilion at Seattle Center. Help spread awareness and understanding. Send the message that help is available and raise funds for the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. Register today at AFSP.org slash Seattle. That's AFSP.org slash Seattle. The best thing about the Seattle International Auto Show is everything. It's the best place to turn questions into answers. Compare the newest models from major manufacturers, gas power, hybrid, and EV, all under one roof. See them, touch them, drive them at the Seattle International Auto Show, presented by BECU. Live at Lumen Field Event Center, Thursday through Sunday, November 14th through 17th. Discover your drive. For tickets and info, visit seattleautoshow.com today. This episode is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Whether you love true crime or comedy, celebrity interviews or news, you call the shots on what's in your podcast queue. And guess what? Now you can call them on your auto insurance too with the Name Your Price tool from Progressive. It works just the way it sounds. You tell Progressive how much you want to pay for car insurance and they'll show you coverage options that fit your budget. Get your quote today at Progressive.com to join the over 28 million drivers who trust Progressive. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Price and coverage match limited by state law. Hey, it's Doug. Suicide is something that affects all of us, and we can all play a part in saving lives. Make a difference in your community by walking out of the darkness with us on Sunday, October 13th at Fisher Pavilion at Seattle Center. Help spread awareness and understanding. Send the message that help is available and raise funds for the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. Register today at AFSP.org slash Seattle. That's AFSP.org slash Seattle. It's better over here. After investing billions to light up our network, T-Mobile is America's largest 5G network. Plus, right now, you can switch, keep your phone, and we'll pay it off up to $800. See how you can save on every plan versus Verizon and AT&T at T-Mobile.com slash keep and switch. Up to four lines via virtual prepaid card. Allow 15 days. Qualifying unlocked device credit service ported 90 plus days with device and eligible carrier and timely redemption required. Card has no cash access and expires in six months. Are you looking for the powerful roar of a work truck, the quiet performance of an EV, or the creature comforts of a hybrid SUV? Whatever you need, the best place to see them, touch them, and drive them is at the Seattle International Auto Show, presented by BECU. Test drives, demonstrations, and information all under one roof. Live at Lumen Field Event Center, Thursday through Sunday, November 14th through 17th. Discover your drive. For tickets and info, visit seattleautoshow.com today. What's up? It's your boy, the Ted Smith from the Men's Room. And did you know I have a podcast? Well, I do. The Podcast. New episodes uploaded every Wednesday on the Odyssey app. 
99.9 KISW. We return to the men's room with Miles and Thrill. My question, what is the craziest thing that's happened in the comforts of your own home? 206-803-ROCK. Hello, Steven. Welcome to the men's room. Hola, bicholas. Hola. Good to speak with you guys again. Turn it. A crazy kind of thing. I suppose when you come home from work, you don't expect DEA to come and be right inside the doorway when you get there. Well, it depends who you are. Uh, but, yeah. <laughs> they were already in your home when you got there. They were already in my home when I got there. Had yeah. someone let them in, or did they uh, have a, a warrant to enter? They had a reason to arrest one of my roommates. Ah. Oh. Aha. Okay. So, it, it, as you approach it, the house and you see DEA, how long did it take you to piece together that it's DEA? Um, when I walked in the door and they turned me around and frisked me. Okay. And did you already have an idea of which roommate they were there for? Absolutely. Okay. So you knew kind of what he was doing. Oh yeah. It was, it, yeah. This, this was a few years ago. Yeah. We were, we were doing the same thing, but he was the one who got caught. Aha. Uh-huh. How what were you doing? Was this that the DEA um, and not the cops are involved? Um, the amount. Okay. Uh, which now, drug in particular? Um, I choose not to say. Okay. All right. But do you... There's, it's, there's, people, there's people online who recognize my voice. All right. Oh, well, as right. far as you know, depending what drug it is you're slinging, you have to get over a certain weight before the DEA kind of takes over for the cops? Or type. Or type. Ah, okay. All, All right. right. And were you using this drug yourself or just making a profit off of it? Uh, I was just using it. You were just using it, okay? And how yeah, so did if you, so? If remember in Cheech and Chong when uh, Chong's on the stand and he says, "No, I've only used it twice." All right. On one of those things, little piece of the paper. Okay. All right. Yeah. Now, why did the DEA let you go? Or are you just not a big enough fish for them to care about? I wasn't a big enough fish. Is that a fish with a pH? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Indeed. Okay. Um, okay. No, the 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 amounts of what they were doing um, caught the attention of those guys. So the amount of what they were yeah. doing or what they were distributing. What they were distributing. Okay. And did and they the get them? The police like... turned it over to them because of that amount. So wow. had your roommate been arrested before, or did the police were they keeping yeah. an eye on him? And they're like, look, man, this is above he, our pay grade. He had, he had he had been arrested before, and we found out shortly thereafter. Um, he, he was he was actually working for them. Oh, so how does this fall on you? Does it at all? I Wait, mean, does anything come back it, your it way? It didn't. It didn't because I wasn't a big enough fish in there. I see. I was just I would just happen to be one of the people in the house, and that's the way they looked at it, and that's the way everything went down. They said, "You're okay. You're the one with this and this in your room." So eBay, they basically they had him as a narc, and then they went in and busted him anyway. They went and busted him and the person who they who who was the bigger fish. Okay, so your roommate was he the bigger fish or the narc? He was the narc. He was the narc. And do they know that at the time? But they have to arrest him anyway yep. to make it look good. They arrested him anyway to make it to make it look uh, easier on him. Okay, wow. now did you know he was a narc before this moment? Nope. No. So no. Well, you shouldn't go to that festival anymore. So <laughs> how do you find out what the deal is? Does he just come back home? A couple of days oh, later, yeah, he was home the next. He was home that evening, and he explained to you how he got out of this, quote unquote. He said, "I've been working for them for quite a long time. He was somebody they were looking at." Oh okay. man! All right, and, and you couldn't tell us that when the party that was over here the other night, when he showed up with half the people who were in here were well, so, agents. I mean, it, well, kind of can. Oh, the people that were at your party were agents too. Oh, the Friday before that. That's how they identified who the players were and who they weren't. But we didn't know that. We just thought they were all students of his, fellow students of his. How weird is huh. that when he comes clean and, and explains all this to you? I've known him since we were kids, so it wasn't. It, it, I kind of figured as much because he he had been busted before. Did so you get a new the, roommate? After the fact, we figured it out. Or did you just continue to live like nothing happened? Pretty much. Okay. We just knew that. Then he just wasn't included in a lot of things we did. And did he? I'm guessing he didn't want to be included in a lot of things you were doing either, right? No, he did not. Yeah. Did he spend that any was, time in? Uh, that was part of his next thing. Did he spend any time incarcerated because of this? Not that time. Okay. All right. That's uh. No. That's a lot. I mean, hell, you but get yeah, public he, intoxication, spend the night in jail. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, seriously, that's what I'm saying. Like Jesus. I mean, 
think if you bust a major thing with DEA and all that stuff, like, no, we'll let you go, man. Just science paperwork, man. Just get Uber home. Well, I think he's saying the guy that was that was that was the narc was telling on him. Didn't spend a ton of time in there. Correct. I'm yeah, sure the, the other, other guy, guy did yeah, time. Yeah. I mean, look, man, Mike. No offense. DEA rolls in here. I'm like Mike's the narc. I mean, there's <laughs> right. I mean, there's just. You think I would do that to you guys? It's not that I think you would do it to us, but if the DEA showed up, I'd be like, it has to yeah. be you. See, maybe but there's had... no way it possibly. Like, but if also, it's you got to keep in mind, though, Miles like, generally the way it works is moving up a ladder. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, like, his roommate, the dude he grew up with, probably didn't start that way. So, it, the dude was saying, like, he had been yeah. arrested before. Right, right. So then, right. So, it wouldn't be Mike because yeah. they wouldn't have anything on him. That's right. He'd have no reason yeah. to turn See, it on. Yeah. No, but See, Mike's good enough that I think, like, without having been arrested, Mike's just an undercover n- cop. Maybe Miles. Not so much a narc. But Miles is using me for the perfect cover for that. He's letting me be that oh, No, Miles totally, is deep, I got a totally deep different undercover. Strategy. Miles see, is in the game see, undercover. Uh, Eric Powers uh, across the hall here at, uh, uh, yeah. at uh, Hot, right? See, I'd, I'd, I'd narc on him, and that way you know, we don't have that competition. You see what I'm saying? So I, I just I, look out the stage. I play a different, I, I try to get him uh, you know, out of the building. <laughs> and that way, you know, like just one less, uh, you know, one less team to play that season. Not so Drew. Speak. You got to do Drew. <laughs> oh, yeah. Not Powers, Drew. Yeah, who that's the guy. Yep. Mm-hmm. What? Uh, what's the craziest thing that's happened in the comfort of your own home? Two hundred six eight zero three rock. God, it's just weird. I don't think I could ever pull off being a narc. And not I'm some big moral thing, but just like, okay, guys, I, I hear what you're saying, and I understand this is part of the condition of my release and all that. But like, they're doing drugs I like, you know. So, but I mean, nobody plans to, right? right? I mean, I don't care what the organization is, whether it's La Costa Nostra, yeah. the Mafia, or you know, some other different street gangs. It's You know, that's that's the rule, right? You don't talk. But when people are staring down the barrel of life in federal penitentiaries and this and that, people start talking, no, no, and they figure it out. I get all of that. What I'm saying is, like, guys, if you don't want me to... I get all of that. You don't want me to do drugs. Like, I got bad news. I mean, like, like if you're going to put me in there, and these guys are doing coke or smoking weed or other things I like, like, I'm going to do it with them. Like, I can give them the information on whoever it is you're looking for. I'm just saying, like, if you're asking me to live clean, just out of the spirit of honesty, there's zero chance that's going to happen. Mm-hmm. You know, like, hey, we're going to put you in this, they're doing all this blow, like, yeah, man, you know, I'm just, I'm just fitting in. Like, I, I'll give you the info you need, but I'm getting high. Well, hell, I mean, there's even cases of undercover cops getting too, That's too, what ra- I mean. it's too like, wrapped up. You know, I'm it's like, oh, we kind of and... lost that guy. He started doing a lot of coke. Yeah, I mean, you put him in a drug operation. It's like, and you got to prove yourself. Like, well, I, I can prove I can take down a line or two. Here you go. We think you're too far in the game, Steve. We got to pull you out of this one. Why do you think I wanted to be undercover? <laughs> <laughs> that's why I signed up for this, man. What, uh, what's the craziest thing that's happened in the comfort of your own home? 206-803-ROCK. I'm getting paid to do coke. <laughs> Can you beat that? <laughs> yeah. Hello, hello, Brian. Welcome to the men's room. Hello. How are you doing? Hola. Hola, Hola bitches. Brian, what's up? Well, my uh, last roommate... He ended up, well, he was my neighbor at the time, and he would walk by with his dog, and we got to meet each other, and our dogs got along, so we went to walks together and took him to the beach and just let him play, and one day he came up to me, and he says, my my uh, people I rent with, it, he wants to kill me. <laughs> did, he, and, did he explain why? Uh, not really. He just said he wants me out today and he's going to kill me. And I said, well, I, I had a two bedroom, uh, place and one bedroom was empty. And he asked you, can I move in? And I'm like, no. And I lied and said, my cousin's going to be moving in here in a week or two. And he says, well, I got nowhere else to go. And uh, shoot, I just felt so bad. So I was like, all right. But my cousin says she's moving in, which was a BS story. You're out. And he's like, okay. And he came in, our dogs got along, and I told him, I said, hey, you know, what I do is I open the door at night or during the day and I close it all the way, but not latched. And then my dog goes out and does his deed and comes back, pushes the door open. So he kind of got used to that. And 
the middle of winter he would do that for his dog and uh you know, we're on an electric furnace and he would fall asleep. So the dog would come back and the door would be open all night long. And I'd wake up in the morning and I'm like, God dang it. And, and then, well, I'm trying to make this short as possible. Well, you're not doing a very good job, Ryan. I got to be perfectly honest with you. I, I like you as a person, but that's not, it's not your strength. No, I'm working on it, right. but uh, I don't know if you know what fish line is. No, 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 no. Never been fishing. Like fishing line? Fish, no. It's like a place where you go to get free food. Ah, okay. Okay. Well, he signed up for that, and I came home one day with a, just one bag of food, and I was like, opened up the refrigerator and the cupboards and there was no place for anything. And I was pissed. And I'm like, I can't even bring my own food home. And then you got the power bill. And I'm like, Jesus, how, how, what the hell is the power bill so high for? Well, because your door was open all night, Brian. Oh, well, no, there's another reason. He, he said, I like to shower until all the hot water runs out. Okay. And that tipped me over. And I uh, told him, all right, we're done. It's time for you to leave. And I came home the next day after work, and he took three quarters of my stuff. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Do you, did, you, did you not think to maybe ask this guy, why does your roommate want to kill you? See, to me, that's no, a red flag. My roommate landlord, is saying, landlord, landlord. Need, okay, but when the word is, they want to kill me, that usually means either the person speaking to me has mm -hmm. done something really, really bad that I want no part of, or the person who's doing the threatening is an absolute lunatic. Uh, he, was okay. right. he, he was throwing drugs on their property. All right. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, Mike, what was the short version of that? Just for uh, I'm just curious what he told you. I he, he had a bad roommate. I had just filled his house full of stuff, and he was not a very good roommate. Oh, yeah. Again, when someone says, "Hey," and this is this is just advice for for anyone. My landlord or my roommate wants to kill me. Got to move into your place. Your answer is no. Just say no. That's, it's the ultimate red flag. Oh, man. <laughs> the people I live with, they want to kill me. They need me to move out. Yes. Oh, I, you want to well, move in I with mean, that person? outside of, I'm trying to think. I mean, it, I mean I've mean, i heard At, at my story. age, there's very few people I would, like, move in with me. No. Oh, like, no. Yeah. No. Like, I mean, if you go, hey, my wife kicked me out of the house, I go. It's temporary. All right, you can stay in the other room for, like, a couple nights. Right, totally. But that's it. Like, I, I'm with you. But especially right. if they said, well, somebody somebody wants to murder me. I'm like, get away from my door. And see, right. right, there's a difference if you say, my wife wants to kill me. You go, right. you get a couple of days. Oh, if my someone roommate wants to, wants to kill me, like, okay, well, they might actually do it. You've no, done it's, something. But it's the, it's the landlord who owns the property right next door. So if that's the I case, want to kill he you. knows you moved next door. He said, if he wants to kill you, he's just going to knock on the door next door and still try to kill your ass. You haven't left, essentially. Yeah, you, you can't be here. Okay. Take two. I mean, well, imagine you got a job interview. Hey, what's the reason you uh, left your last job? Oh, my boss, man, he, uh, he wanted to kill me. Like, to me, don't hire that guy. Well, you know, there is the beef with the long showers. What, uh, what's the craziest thing that's happened in the comfort of your own home? 206-803-ROCK. Just real quick, did he say if he they was a house or an apartment building? I don't know. Because um, also, if he's in an apartment building, like, that's going to stay hot for a while. Yeah. <laughs> Right, like a single family home. It, look, it's too ridiculous either way, but at least if it's just a home, I go, yeah. well, eventually it'll run out, right? But like, dude, you're in a giant building, like, that, you're just running water. Right. Man, yeah, I'm weird about people. Like, if you're visiting, I get it. Someone has made arrangements, they're going to visit your house when they stay. My mom keeps having this idea. She's like, if your father dies before me. Oh, my God. Yeah, look, man, they're in their 80s, so these conversations, just out of the blue. Oh, no, mom, you're going to die first. Say, like, you know, pass the salt. Uh, if your father dies before me, uh, I'm, I'm moving into your basement. Mm -hmm. And I have told her repeatedly, I don't know why you keep saying that. Oh, you know what you I should say? I don't you know ever remember inviting you to do so. Here's I know that that's not what I would like yeah. to do, but you keep saying this like this is the thing. And in her mind, 
That is absolutely the scenario. So I have to go to my father and yell into his hearing aid. Do not die. Yeah. Don't do you, not die first. What'd you yeah. tell no you, peanuts. No ice cream, Dad. Anything she yeah. says, do not do it. You tell your mom. You say, look, Dad and I have an agreement. When you have your, quote, accident, he's moving. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's got so, dibs. Sorry, man. <laughs> also, <laughs> your mom. <laughs> Jesus. Chuck your up. mom might have had a shot at this, but, like, your kids are already old enough. Like, you don't need some, as yeah. much help now. Yeah. No, I don't. Like, if you had, like, a five and a six-year-old, you'd be like, all right, Mom, you yeah. can move in. But now it's like, ah. Get to age, they'll be okay. Yeah, I'm like, you're I, going somewhere else. I'm like, so why do you keep saying this? You, go, you know how your brother is. Your brother would send me into a home. I'm like, yeah, not my home. So I'm okay with that. By the way, his brother's got like a five bedroom mansion. That's what, my, he has no kids. He has like five bedrooms. Full basement. A, an absolute full basement. Probably like 5,200 square feet. Like, again, he has no kids. He does not have to pay to travel. Like, he's just made of money and bad voice, right? That is who he is. Why can't she move her ass there? Actually, you know why? I'm just thinking about this. She don't want to live with him either. Doesn't want to live close no. to her family. Uh, my brother, they just converted one of the bedrooms in their house to accommodate his mother-in-law. Oh, really? Yeah, and according to his wife, according to my sister-in-law, she said, you know, it was Adrian's idea. And we're on FaceTime, so I had to keep my face from screwing up. And I'm like, I just, he's a real nice guy. He is. My brother's a genuine guy, but also... Hand into drama. I cannot imagine that he said to my sister-in-law, hey, if your mother's not doing well, let me spend money to convert the room so that she can live here. What I think probably happened was my sister-in-law brought it up to my brother, and she suggested that, you know, we could do, redo one of these rooms and she can move in. And then I picture, like, 20 minutes of silence where he's just staring at a TV that's not even on, takes a deep breath and says... Okay. And then the way it gets translated is it was his idea. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't think it was. What's well, the craziest thing that's happened in the comfort of your own home? 206 803 Rock. Hello, Willie. Welcome to the men's room. Boo, you old ladies. Boo. Ah. <laughs> Let me try to make this short. And- <laughs> okay, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, mid nineties, uh, Portland, Oregon, me and friend lived in a, a apartment, two bedroom apartment. And, uh, he had this friend that used to travel, uh, back and forth from Vancouver, BC, all the way to Mexico. Uh, Dr. Feelgood kind of fella had a, it was a school bus, like a short school bus. And, uh, he was a businessman. And anyway, he had a, a bull mastiff, big, big dog, uh, named seven. And then he had a tiny little chihuahua named giant. And uh, he was staying with us for a, a weekend, and Giant died. The little Chihuahua died while he was in uh, while he was at our, our place. And I came home one night, late one night, and they were saran wrapping the dog, and then put him into uh, big uh, seal meal bags. And then they were gonna. He wanted to freeze the dog and leave him in the freezer while he continued his trip, and then he was going to pick him back up on the way back. So you have a dead chihuahua in your freezer, is what you're saying, until the time he gets to Mexico and drives back on a school bus. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Are you going to use those ice cubes? He convinced my roommate to, you know, is this going to be for a week or or whatever the deal was? And uh, that dog stayed there all summer long. Uh We were picked out. We got kicked out of the place, and we moved all of our... Well, he got kicked out, and I, I chose to move. And uh, that dog stayed there in the freezer. And we always we used to joke about... Our, imagine when the landlord like came in to do the inspection and, and clean up the place or whatever and opens up this bag in the freezer and found old old giant waiting to get taxidermied, and he just never got never got picked up. He was going to taxidermy oh, his, his plan to, was to taxidermy the chihuahua. Good God. Well, that was an interesting segment. <laughs> What's the craziest thing that happened in the comfort of your own home? 206-803-ROCK. This episode is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Whether you love true crime or comedy, celebrity interviews or news, you call the shots on What's in Your Podcast queue. And guess what? Now you can call them on your auto insurance, too, with the Name Your Price tool from Progressive. It works just the way it sounds. You tell Progressive how much you want to pay for car insurance, and they'll show you coverage options that fit your budget. Get your quote today at Progressive.com to join the over 28 million drivers who trust Progressive. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Price and coverage match limited by state law. Hey, it's Doug. Suicide is something that affects all of us, and we can all play a part in saving lives. 
Make a difference in your community by walking out of the darkness with us on Sunday, October 13th at Fisher Pavilion at Seattle Center. Help spread awareness and understanding. Send the message that help is available and raise funds for the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. Register today at AFSP.org slash Seattle. That's AFSP.org slash Seattle. Presented by T-Mobile, the official wireless partner of Odyssey Sports. With an awesome network and great savings, there's never been a better time to join T-Mobile. Visit your neighborhood store to make the switch today. 99.9 KISW. The men's room returns with Miles and Thrill. Return of Who Sucks Less on the way right after emails on our question, what is the craziest thing that's happened in the comforts of your own home? 206-803-ROCK. Hello, Mike. Welcome to the men's room. Hey, hola. Hola. So I'm, I grew up in Shoreline, and I'm living on the other side of the tracks. And shout out to Ted. I saw you at your local watering hole a couple months ago. But uh, nice. I, I used to party at this place called the Royal Unicorn. I stayed at this really nice house in Richmond Beach. And we used to have after-hours parties there. And they were, you know, fueled what you'd think they'd be fueled with it being an after-hours party. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> But, uh, no, so, uh, and they were notorious. So one time my friend came over, it was my birthday, and he showed up with his girlfriend. He takes me out to the truck, gives me the keys. Oh, hey, 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 hey. Once again, bedroom <laughs> colors, Jesus. here are the seven words Jesus. you can't say on the radio. Jesus. <laughs> what is happening? Sugar, wow. mother, and wow. please keep those words in mind when calling. Now back to the program. It's like when a deer comes oh out of nowhere God. and just smashes Jesus right into a car. Jesus Christ, so mouth hug. Uh, Jesus. Uh, so then that, well, that happened. Well, then the bartender at the, the Royal Unicorn where I used to hang out at, um, she was notorious for like just being a, a fun person. and She'd just bring these uh, entourages of women with her. And she showed up after her shift, and then they proceeded to kind of get naked and dancing around like they, they did a lot, actually. And then... Uh, and I was going great, and everything was fun. And then my roommate shows up, like, what the hell is going on? And it was a girl. She comes down, and the bartender girl is, like, shooting grapes out of her hoo-ha in the, in the basement. <laughs> and they were shooting so hard and so far, and she didn't stop. They went through the sliding glass door and, like, hit the back fence. It was just like, anyway, yeah, that was weird. We called her salad shooter after that. Yeah, all right. I just feel like I looked it up. I Where do you live? I know. <laughs> that place is uh, new owners in 2023. Oh, new owners. Okay. It's like a Shoot. Chinese restaurant. Oh, yeah. she said those parties are done. Yeah, I was just going to Google it. Like, let's see if there's any crazy stories online about this old bar. And it's like, new, <laughs> new ownership. Mm -hmm. We want to be clear. Please. That's a shame because it sounded like I'd have liked those people. No grapes on the cheese plate. <laughs> 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 I remember we were at a bar once, me and my buddy Tony, and uh, there was a guy named Nicky. And Nicky was pretty cool, but he's like, hey, man, we're closing down the bar. You guys want to go back to my place? We'll get a few more drinks. I'm like, ah, we're hemming and home, but we're like, F it, man. Let, let's go over there. And they had a little uh, a little town home, an area of Baltimore called Fells Point. We roll in there, and the party is pretty good, but there's all these chicks wearing nothing but lingerie. I mean, just Walking around the house everywhere. I have no idea how he pulled this off. I don't know what the, the theme was supposed to be. But, like, because Nikki had been at the bar with us pretty much all night. So, I don't know when these shit. Like, they were there when we got there. And they're half, you know, half drunk at this point when we get in. Drugs everywhere. And they're playing Naked Twister, which was awesome. Because they're like, do you want to play? My buddy Tony's like, nah, nah. I'm like, hell yeah. I'm not even flexible, but I'm getting in on this action. It was, it was a hell of a night, man. And I just... It just came out. It was like an 80s rock video when we walked in there. So it, but did you get all the way naked by the time the game was over? Yeah. I mean, I was, yeah, man, that was yeah. kind of the goal, man. Yeah, okay. I just. Uh, I mean, even. It, I didn't know if that was the goal or to stay Even cold. if you go to an after hours with bartenders or whatever, like, it doesn't have to be like X rated stuff. But those parties are always going to be a little crazier because you either have customers or friends they know mm -hmm. who have been drinking but are still up at 2 a.m. Yep. Or generally, like, when I worked in bars, it seemed like there was always a few few dudes or women that were like, no, 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 I'm going home. Sure. Mm -hmm. But then the people that wanted to go out always liked to have a good time. Oh, man. Always. That so it's like, I mean, I remember a couple of them. We just would do dumb stuff. So there, there's plenty of good ones that involve chicks and everything. But like, yeah. it's not always X-rated, but like those parties are always going to be a little bit different. Always. I mean, like get real drunk. Okay. What's the craziest thing that's happened in the comfort of your own home? 206-803-ROCK. Here we go. 
Hello, Bernie. Welcome to the men's room. Hola, bitch, hola. Hola. So, many, many moons ago in the Berg of Sequim, uh, me and my uh, girlfriend were crashed out on a, you know, Tuesday or Wednesday night. So, you know, a school night, work night, whatever. And we hear this, this way before cell phones, all of that. We hear this huge crash in the house. And, of course, I'm instantly awake, bolt out of bed. I am, you know, butt naked. And I yell really loudly. I go, call 911. I'm getting my gun. And, and, and she's a cop's daughter, right? And, and she whispers back to me and she goes, uh, we don't have a phone in here and you don't have a gun. I go, they don't know that. And so I throw some pants on, grab my baseball bat out of the, out of the closet and I sneak down the hall, flip the light on, nothing, nothing. It's quiet. I'm like, uh oh, either they're run out or they're gone to ground, whatever. So I go down the hallway and now I come to the juncture, the kitchen, living room, you know, the big living area. I got the baseball bat ready to go. I step out. I flip the light on the kitchen, step out, and nobody's there. I look around. I'm like, oh, <laughs> one, of, one of the tabs for the kitchen shelves had busted, and all of our dishes had fallen out onto the kitchen counter and then the floor, hence the crash. Well, that's better than the other scenario. Yeah, is that a sense of relief? Like, okay, cool. We just need to buy new dishes, babe. Well, you know, I'm so wired up with, you know, uh, adrenaline. I spent the next half an hour cleaning the kitchen. So, you know, after I put shoes on, because I'm not walking around barefoot in that crap. What's so, up? Were you bare? Did, were you butt naked except shoes? No, no, I threw some pants on. Ah, okay. okay. Right. And what yeah, kind of baseball I, bat was I, it? I had no shoes. Anyways, I just threw some pants on, grabbed my baseball bat, and well, I'm on a mission. I got to ask, what kind of baseball bat was it? <laughs> it was aluminum, baby. <laughs> All right, so did you play softball, or did you buy this purposefully to put in your closet just in case of this type of scenario? Oh, this was softball, so it's All not right. real. That explains. It was a, ping, it was a pinger. <laughs> right, let me ask you this, man. Was, was your girlfriend always kind of dumb? Not saying she's stupid, oh, no. but when you do the, I, I'm going to get my gun and call 911, like, we don't have a phone. Oh. Like, babe. Use your head for a second, dumbass. Yeah, I know well, this. I, I don't. She was a cop daughter. She whispered it to me. Uh -huh. All right. Uh, All right. That's yeah. a little bit better. She's not that dumb. She was smart. Okay. So I've thought of this before because, you know, like uh, guns are obviously that's, that's, that's going to be able to protect you. But if you are not a gun owner, then what's the next best case scenario to have as far as just being a effective and be something that would tactically make someone not want to, you know, engage, correct? A machete. Oh. So I've thought about a machete, but I think it's too light. So unless, too you, light. Keep, unless you keep it sharpened, right? Because I've, you know, I've, you've hacked weeds with a machete. It doesn't have to be sharp. If you're swinging this thing because someone broke in your house and so that adrenaline's mm -hmm. behind you, you're going to do more damage with that dull right. ass blade okay. when you make contact so, in the sharp. I thought meat cleaver. All mm -hmm. right. That was, that was on my list. I've also thought <laughs> uh, small crossbow. Like pistol size cross. Sure. Because it, to me, it, I, I'd almost rather get shot with a bullet. I mean, I'm, I'm sorry. I know that sounds like a stupid thing to say, but I just don't. That arrow kind of being pulled out of my crap and all that stuff. To me, the two best things, a dog or a brick. Yeah. Because the brick, look, because one, I won't go through this whole story again, but a guy had a knife. There was a confrontation. When we first moved here in Belltown, my wife was with me, and I said, but you've got a problem. you got to get close to me with that knife in your hand. I was like, that ends bad for you. A gun would make. If you're going to be a mugger, I would just recommend you carry a gun. I don't recommend that you that you mug anyone. But I explained to this guy like, this is a bad decision. Now, if he had a brick, I feel like it's different because if he hits me with a brick, it's gonna it's gonna drop me at least, right? Then he can come over and have his will. So to me, a dog or a brick. All right. I mean, one like, yeah. Like I've been when I was at Capitol Hill the last few years there. Like I definitely kept a bat next to my one door. Sure. But I feel like Capitol Hill, case. that's kind of just what you need. My yeah. just got, you, you, like, open the curtains with yeah. the bat. They, they already get the idea, like, okay, all right. My, yeah, my, my, like, I just did one some crazy just on my back door. Like, all right, I'm going to have this bat here. My uncle has a, uh, a fishing bat behind his driver's seat all in right. his car. 
I know damn well he hadn't fished in 15, 20 years. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, hey, Uncle Bill, what the hell is that? He's like, what do you think it's for? And I was like, it's not for fish. He's like, that's exactly right. He's like, I've seen that move Florida once. people are crazy. I was walking my dog, and there were, there were two cars stopped at the light, and there's an old dude in the front car and this big brother in the car behind. Or, no, the big brother is at the light. Old guy is in the second car. So the light turns green. You get a good three Mississippi. He's still not moving forward. So the guy in the second car... Just does a, a light tap. Yeah. Um, not the, the, just a beam. You know, one that just says, hey, the lights turn green. Yeah. The brother didn't want to hear this. So we see his car starts like shifting back and forth, kind of. And it's him sliding to get out of the car. I did not realize how big this guy was until he steps out of the vehicle. He's not super tall, but he had to be 350. It was a big, big dude. So now the guy who honked the horn, he looks terrified. But the brother, and I mean, he's walking. Like he's underwater, slow motion. He's in no hurry. Opens up his trunk, pulls out a baseball bat, and taps on this guy's driver's side window and just looks at him. So now the old guy that honked is not making eye contact. His hands on the wheel, staring forward. Light turns red again. Brother stares him down for about five more seconds. Puts the bat back in his trunk, closes it, gets back. And again, just as cool and as calm as you can be, gets back in the car. Thing shakes back and forth as he adjusts his big fat ass to driving position. Light turns green again. He stays there for about a good five seconds just to dare the guy to honk at him. The guy did not honk at him. And then they pulled off and all was good. Hmm. But I was like, this dude actually has the bat in his trunk and took the time to pull it out. And again, no hurry. There was zero sense of urgency. Yeah, there was no sense of urgency that guy from the jump. At, oh, no, not at all. I mean, he just got out of the Jesus. car like, I'm to get the bat. Yeah. Tap out the window, see if you want to step out. You don't, okay. Put the back in, close the trunk, adjust my sleeves, get back in the car. I'm just like, dang, even my dog was staring at it like, ain't that some ass? Yeah, a little bit of an overreaction. Yeah. What, uh, what's the craziest thing that's happened in the comfort of your own home? 206-803-ROCK. I like your dog's like, dude, chill out. Yeah, I mean, we're both just standing there. Even the dog's like, this brother is crazy. Hello, Tony. Welcome to the men's room. Hola. Hola. So it's, we'll go with two in the morning-ish, the, uh, the drunken hour, and uh, sleep with the kids. All of a sudden, you get just pounding on the door. Of course, it's one of those ones that just wakes you up. So I go downstairs, and I'm like, okay. And I look through the hole, or some dude, he's bleeding, and, Ugh. you know, looks like he's been handled pretty well. And open the door, and the screen door is still closed. And he says, so I need help. My buddy just beat me up. Okay. Well, did you call the cops? No, man, I don't want to call the cops. And I said, well, here, let me go get your rag, and I'll stay right there. So I go grab a towel, come back, and I go through the screen door. And now he's sitting down on the porch getting the towel. And he stands up and he turns around. And he says, man, I really need help. And he try, almost tries to reach for me. <laughs> and little did I know that my four-year-old with his pirate sword standing between my legs behind me, pokes this guy in the uh, you-know-who us. Guy bends over. And I'm thinking, okay, well, he's having a rough night now. So I call 911. <laughs> this is in Des Moines, so it's a small town. Cops show up. And they, he walks down out to the lawn with them. And they're talking to him. He starts getting lippy with him. And then they get him out to the curb. And he's still running his mouth. I need that. Well, for some reason, they took him clear across the street. And the kid's standing there with me. He goes, Dad, what are they going to do? I said, I don't know. We'll see. Well, then he starts getting lippy. Next thing you know, he's laying on the ground getting tased going. He's shaking all over the ground. And the cop's going. He's like, just the cop's telling him, hey, don't move, don't move. And he goes, I can't. As he's slopping all over the ground. And my kid starts laughing. He goes, Dad, that's kind of funny. I said, oh, that's got to hurt. So paramedics show up to get the, the prongs out of him. And he starts getting lippy with the paramedics. And the officer says, hey, man, if you do this again, we're going to tase you again. He takes a swing at the paramedic. Literally, no, he gets on the ground. And my son goes, Dad, that looks like a fish. Like he just came off the hook. <laughs> so... Anyway, so it's kind of an interesting thing for my kid to see, but watching this guy get tased twice just re and Yeah, you know, good for him for poking him in the yeah. boys. You know how I mean? old uh, how old was the kid? He was four at the time. So <laughs> I just couldn't believe it. I had no idea what he's ever he's like some ninja with a pirate sword, I yeah. swear to God. You thought that pirate idea for <laughs> Halloween was bad at the time, and now you're like, you know what? That was a pretty good costume. Right? That wasn't such a bad idea. The That's good right. thing that sword wasn't rubber. <laughs> hey, how old is your kid now? He is 18. Does he remember this? 
Yeah, he does. He actually, I don't know how he remembers. I figured there's no way he's going to remember this. But every time we go fishing, <laughs> if we get a fish, it reminds him somehow of it. And he goes, Dad, remember that guy? <laughs> yeah, I remember him. <laughs> wow. That's how he remembers. <laughs> yes. You would remember that. What's the craziest thing that's happened in the comfort of your own home? 206-803-ROCK. Hello, Nick. Welcome to the men's room. Hola, bitola. Hola. So back in the late 90s, I was a student at Chico State in California. We did a lot of partying down there. And uh, my three roommates, Viking Matt and Arkansas Bill, and I went out to the, the bars and I, uh, we got separated or whatever, and they went home before me. So when I come home around, I don't know, 2, 2.30, I open the door, and there's a three-foot swan, angry as hell, walking around the living room. <laughs> now, the kicker is, we also had a free-range iguana that lived in the house, and they weren't getting along. So I come in the door drunk, and all hell breaks loose. Squ uh, the swan and the iguana and me and feathers and then my drunk roommates wake up and it's a whole cacophony of mess in our apartment two in the morning how it's how epic. did the swan get into your apartment so uh, train tracks run by the house and my two roommates apparently were walking down the train tracks and found a swan that was unconscious and decided that it would be a good idea to bring it home Great course, idea. You know, it, like, like anybody would, right? Well, it wasn't dead. It was just unconscious, and it woke up, and while they were passed out on the couch, <laughs> it's kind of, you know, facing off with Dick the Iguana, and uh, I come through the door, and then I, being the catalyst, it all just it all just went to mess. So what do you do? Did you guys finally, what, wrangle the swan or just throw its ass outside? So we open the sliding glass door and the front door, and we're, you know, doing the thing that you do with your arms out, trying to herd animals, and it eventually made it out the back door, which wasn't the best option, but it was still good. But the reason it wasn't a good option is because the our cocaine dealer lived next door, <laughs> right through the back slider, oh my God. and they were out back doing stuff, and so now there's a swan in their party, and it got it got a little bit wild, but it ended up being a really, really good story. So. Yeah. That's... <laughs> Damn. Jesus Christ. <laughs> well, I didn't see all this coming today. <laughs> no. What's the craziest thing that's happened in the comfort of your own home? 206-803-ROCK. <laughs> Hello, Wes. Welcome to the men's room. Wes. Hello, Wes. Wes. Oh, come on, bud. No, Wes. He's there. We can hear you there, Wes. 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 Hello. No, Wes. No, Wes. We Goodbye, tonight. Wes. All right. I'm going to miss you. Swan are, swans are bastards. Yeah, they're bastards, man. I mean, they look cute. Uh, there was a little creek in uh, in the town that I grew up in that Do had swans. Do we think swans. swans actually look that cute, or is yeah. that just because of the ugly duck? But I, but I think, look, to me, it's like the the Disneyification of things, right? So when you're growing up, raccoons were never up to any good in the Disney world and Disney and all that. But they were still cute, and they're fun, and they're lovable. They are not any of those things. Right. Swans, and I think it is ugly duckling, because my first introduction to swans was the ugly duckling. They grew up to be a beautiful swan. So yeah. immediately it's imprinted in your head that swans are good and yeah. cute. Well, so what happened and was they suck. Th th there was a park and basically where the stream came down the mountain, you're in the valley and that stream basically became a very slow flowing uh, river. But it was narrow. So it was a little bit like two or three feet deep. It was, right. it was just a very windy thing and it was it wound through the park and there was a trail and all this stuff. But there was a family that had like a mansion right at the entrance Okay. To that park, like this old brick, you know, English Tudor looking house. Uh, but they were loaded. So they determined at one point in time that they were going to give a gift to the city and they bought swans to put in that river. Now, okay. Uh, it, what are the, like the, the 12 days of Christmas or something? They wanted swans. They wanted to see swans out in the, oh in the, in the, in the river in front of their property, all right? Well, the, the swans uh, pretty quickly procreated. But then, as they were uh, nesting, raising their children, all those things... Getting territorial. They became incredibly aggressive. So they basically had to shut the park down. And they you couldn't be on the trail. You all could right. not ride your bike. You could not be in that vicinity. Uh, they closed a certain area of the park. Now, this is a big community park. Right. You could not go there. 
They had signs warning you to stay away from the swans. They also could not get in there to remove the swans, the nests, the eggs, the babies, any of that stuff. Why? Because the swans were so aggressive. And there was no tactical unit to come in and tranquilize swans in West Virginia. It just wasn't. It's just not. I feel like half the population of West Virginia would be like, just give us the okay. <laughs> well, we yes, can take yes, care of it. That was the thing. They, they basically they wanted to go in and just shoot them. And yeah. Kill them. But they did not do that because they were trying to do the right thing. Because the swans made the paper and all that and all that crap. And they put them in there. They gave this donation and that gift. But they, they literally shut down that park for the summer while they waited for those swans to have babies. And then somehow somebody got them out. They and got them out, right. moved them to a different location. Coming up, the uh, return of Who Sucks Less. And we got your emails coming up next in the men's room at KISW.com. This episode is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Whether you love true crime or comedy, celebrity interviews or news, you call the shots on what's in your podcast queue. And guess what? Now you can call them on your auto insurance, too, with the Name Your Price tool from Progressive. It works just the way it sounds. You tell Progressive how much you want to pay for car insurance, and they'll show you coverage options that fit your budget. Get your quote today at Progressive.com to join the over 28 million drivers who trust Progressive. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Price and coverage match limited by state law. Hey, it's Doug. Suicide is something that affects all of us, and we can all play a part in saving lives. Make a difference in your community by walking out of the darkness with us on Sunday, October 13th at Fisher Pavilion at Seattle Center. Help spread awareness and understanding. Send the message that help is available and raise funds for the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. Register today at AFSP.org slash Seattle. That's AFSP.org slash Seattle. Presented by T-Mobile, the official wireless partner of Odyssey Sports. With an awesome network and great savings, there's never been a better time to join T-Mobile. Visit your neighborhood store to make the switch today. This episode is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Whether you love true crime or comedy, celebrity interviews or news, you call the shots on what's in your podcast queue. And guess what? Now you can call them on your auto insurance too with the Name Your Price tool from Progressive. It works just the way it sounds. You tell Progressive how much you want to pay for car insurance, and they'll show you coverage options that fit your budget. Get your quote today at Progressive.com to join the over 28 million drivers who trust Progressive. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Price and coverage match limited by state law. Hey, it's Doug. Suicide is something that affects all of us, and we can all play a part in saving lives. Make a difference in your community by walking out of the darkness with us on Sunday, October 13th at Fisher Pavilion at Seattle Center. Help spread awareness and understanding. Send the message that help is available and raise funds for the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. Register today at AFSP.org slash Seattle. That's AFSP.org slash Seattle. It's better over here. Now at T-Mobile, get four 5G phones on us and four lines for $25 a line per month when you switch with eligible trade-ins. All on America's largest 5G network. Minimum of four lines for $25 per line per month with auto-pay discount using debit or bank account. $5 more per line without auto-pay, plus taxes and fees and $10 device connection charge. Phones via 24 monthly bill credits for well-qualified customers. Contact us before canceling entire account to continue bill credits or credit stop and balance on required finance agreement due. Bill credits end if you pay off devices early. See T-Mobile.com. What's up? It's your boy, the Ted Smith from the men's room. And did you know I have a podcast? Well, I do. The Podcast. New episodes uploaded every Wednesday on the Odyssey app. The debauchery rolls on. You're listening to The Men's Room with Miles and Thrill. 99.9 KISW. Who sucks less is on the way, but first time for a few emails to The Men's Room at KISW.com. You've got mail. Uh, maybe a first. We don't have any birthday emails today, so thanks for yeah, that. Yeah, Dirty Germans yeah. brought to you by Men's yeah. Room Original Even Sausage. You there. Available through Uli's World Famous Sausage, no one Men's Room Live. Oh. Com, and other fine retailers. Mmm, Schweine Flash. Thank you, Dirty Germans. Oh, we do have time then to catch up on some extra emails that uh, we've had laying around. All the guys, uh, as far as 911 calls, uh, I heard you say something about people calling 911 for non emergencies. My crazy neighbor takes the cake. Called 911 the day I moved in 11 years ago for noise. However, I wasn't home. I was returning the U Haul. Called every time I started my motorcycle or got home on my motorcycle at night. My motorcycle is a wimpy Honda 250. And I'm making noise. When I hosted Texas Hold'em tournaments about people bringing in loads of alcohol, apparently she thought I hosted AA meetings. 
Once when I had my radio on the backyard in a normal volume at 7 o'clock in the summer, she called 911. Most recent time was for me clearing my throat. When the cops came, I showed them that my porch cam had a video showing me sitting there silently, then clearing my throat. When she starts screaming at me to stop clearing my throat and calls 911. <laughs> She's called dozens of times, never for anything that I've actually done anything wrong. On top of that, she's reported to me uh, to the city more than 20 times for dumb stuff like my yard waste bin being out on the street for three days when I was on vacation. Having free plants out for people to take, which many neighbors thank me for. Having a pile of dirt by my fence in the alley when I was doing landscaping. Uh, by the way, all were dismissed. Neighbor from hell. She's never said one word to me that wasn't bitchy. That from the lovely Michelle. Sounds like a joy. That is brutal. Yeah. It's a neighbor from hell. God. Just man. call it like, I, and at some point too, like, can't they do something to that old woman calling on them? Because it's like, you're wasting the cop's time. I'm mm -hmm. sure they've told her a million times, but you know how it is. Yep. Oh, let's see. It's an emergency to me. Uh, bitches and whores, I was listening to the uh, podcast on the Odyssey app and catching up and had to share this story with you guys because I'm sure you can relate, especially my cock. Wish I could have called in, but I work swing shift, so I can't listen in terrestrial forms. So I always just catch up like uh, I, you did years ago. I've emailed before, uh, but uh, my nine-year-old daughter, by the way, loves you guys. I digress. Coming back to Seattle from Mazelon, one thrill endorses, and I wholeheartedly yes. support. And we could not find our flight. Keep in mind, I have a cranky three-year-old plus my ex who's trying to calm her down at the airport, dealing with not a lot of English-speaking individuals. After multiple phone calls, using the airline representative cell phone, finally figured out. My flight was booked for March 11th instead of February 11th. Oh. My oh. boss messed up the ticket. Fortunately, I traveled with my wallet, which I never do, and since I was so broke from spending all my money on this trip, I actually had the company MX card on me. Called my boss to authorize using it for his circumstance. Fortunately, we got back to Seattle the same day. Love you guys, and down the hole of the Cholos. That from Luke. A couple more extra emails. And I feel like if you're on a business trip, and your boss booked it, yeah, and booked the wrong days, and you got that company card, like... I'm taking advantage. Game on. But hey, ball, I got to wait another month, man. Mm -hmm. That's what you booked. I thought that's what you wanted. You know, you booked it. So. On the subject of uh, pain <laughs> and relief. A uh, gentleman catching up on the show on the podcast would like to share a relief story with you. My four year old son just got potty trained within the last month. Instead of going to the bathroom, he'll go out on the back deck and pee in between the slats of the deck into the backyard. Just last week, I hear him screaming from outside for me. When I get outside, he says, Dad, Dad. Wipe my butt. <laughs> he went to the lower deck and pooped in the backyard. So I grabbed the hose, sprayed it down, and the only thing left was corn from the corn on the cob we mm. had for dinner the night before. Thanks for the entertainment from Steven in Excelsior Springs, Missouri. Does that qualify as potty trained? He sounds housebroken. <laughs> like, I know not to do this in the house, but I'm not going to use the toilet. I'll use the yard. Mm -hmm. So housebroken. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Couple more kicked out. Good afternoon, naked ladies. Back in 1999, I got kicked out of Emerald Downs, where we were having our company holiday party right before New Year's. I was working for the company that drives little brown package trucks. I was kicked out because they said I snuck in alcohol. Now, at this point in my life, I'm 25 years old, and I never touched a drop of booze in my life. I was chatting up a young lady and noticed a small airplane bottle, empty, mind you, sitting on the floor. So I picked it up, thought nothing of it, sat it on the table. Maybe five or ten minutes goes by, and the bartender, a teeny tiny lady who was about as wide as she was tall, approaches the table I'm at along with two of the largest uniformed security guards I've ever seen in my life and tell me, you're out of here, for sneaking in that alcohol, pointing at the empty bottle. Then I proceeded to tell her that I don't drink and then asked her what she'd been serving me all night. She says, I've been serving you Pepsi. When I then blurt out how much I hate Pepsi, but now that I'm drinking it, I'm doing it because I don't drink alcohol. She tells me I have to leave or they're going to shut the party down. I say, I don't care. You're just going to piss off 200 drunk people. As I'm saying this, I'm watching my drunken boss happily dancing on the floor with his arms <laughs> flailing in the air. I stood up and said, okay, let's go. A uh, mini-me bartender lady and the two security guards walk me onto the elevator and escort me all the way to the curb and watch me get in my car. At that point, I decided, I said to hell with it and decided just to start drinking. So New Year's Eve, I had my first two adult beverages and I've never looked back. 
Uh, needless to say, I was quite the topic of conversation and had a spirited conversation with our site director the following Monday. I knew exactly who brought in those little bottles. We had a good laugh, and those uh, rascals, uh, they bought me a beverage the next time we all went out. Uh, thank you, fellas, for doing what you do in the many years of last. Uh, stay thirsty. That from uh, Jacob. That's brutal, getting kicked out, and you don't, like, you're not even drinking. And you don't even drink at that time. Like, mm-hmm. come on. Yes. But and, then uh, it doesn't help that the bartender's been giving you Pepsi because chances are whatever's in that mini mm-hmm. would be a fine mixer. Right. Right. Got, so I'm, she's probably yeah. thinking, okay, he's not spending any money here. He's getting Pepsi and brought his own booze. Uh, I, got, I was going to say, I got yeah, my buddy yeah. kicked out of a bar once. Cool. Because we were, uh, <laughs> it's before some giant event or whatever. And like, I mean, I, I wouldn't, I don't do it as, as much. I haven't done it in a while. But, like, it was always fun to kind of top your buddy's bottle of beer. Oh, yeah, make him foam up. And then he'd have to drink it. Now, now at the end, like, the last 10 years, I've seen people use this trick, but I had never seen it before. So I tapped my buddy's beer, and he had just gotten there. All right. Right? Me and my other, me and the other friends have been drinking for, like, uh, 90 minutes, two hours. So if anybody's drunk, it's us. I tap his bottle. He's smart enough. He just plugs it with his thumb and sprays it back on me. It shoots out. This bartender comes over, and I mean, just, like, she's like, you got to go. And we're even like, no, 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 like, we'll, we'll leave. Like, he just got here. That's us being the, but, like, they wouldn't hear it. And for some reason, they let us stay. And it was, we were like, because no, 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 she we're didn't the see idiots. You commit like, the right. I had a guy, this was uh, back in Baltimore, the Baltimore Arena. So, like, Climate Pledge, except 8,000 years old and a piece of trash. But uh, you can't smoke inside, obviously, but I'm me. So I go into the bathroom. I grab one of the stalls. And I'm trying to chief down the cigarette as subtle as I can. But the one thing I'm doing is I'm blowing it under the partition between me and the next stall. Well, there's a dude in the next stall. Now, he's not saying anything about me doing this. And I'm not trying to make it obvious. Either way, security guard walks in, taps on his stall door. It's like, my man, my man, I know you're smoking in the man. You need to put it out right now. Otherwise, I got to throw you out of the event. Do you understand? The guy's like, yeah, yeah, I understand, man. So the security guard stands there for a second. I blow out one more puff. I put my cigarette out. A security guard hears a little pss and walks away. And then the guy in the stall next to me, he gets up. I think he has left. So I wait about two minutes. I open my stall door. I do just stand in there waiting for me. Right? I've never met this guy before in my life. And he's good. I did you a solid, man. I said, I, bro, <laughs> I did you a solid. I know, man. Yes. I know. He's like, seriously, man, you're blowing smoke under that. I said, I, I just, I figured you'd ask me to stop. He's, I can't say what he said. But he's like, and bomb. Mm-hmm. Man, you know you're not supposed to smoke. And I said, I know. And the security guard's going to throw my ass out. I said, man, just thank you for taking the heat for that one. He's like, mm-hmm. I was like, but good looking out. Yeah. Good looking out. I'm surprised he didn't be like, buy me a beer. No, he just, he did not ask for anything in return, but he made it clear that we are not friends. Oh, all right. All right. I, I think get that, that. that's more or less what that conversation Fair was. Enough. All right, Todd, coming up, we'll drink and tell us for the shot of the day. But first, now, the men's room wants to know... Hey, time for Who Sucks Last. Stephen Thrill, who you bring us three stories from the news each and every week. They all suck, but it's up to us to determine out of the three stories which one sucks the least. Now, if you happen to like uh, KISW on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, the debate is already underway on Who Sucks Less. Yeah, we got three stories today, as we always do. And one of all is a baby crying on an airplane, which no one enjoys. No one likes it less than the parents of the toddler, believe it or not, but no one likes it. One thing the kids do like, kids love bubbles. My God, man. When my kids were young, we could use bubbles as currency. I could work outdoors for hours because we got those little bubble machines that blow bubbles. That's all they need. But then kids get older and they want iPhones. So let us start with the crying baby. So two women on a domestic flight in China who were fed up listening to a crying toddler, they decided to take matters into their own hands. And they've set off a furor on Chinese uh, social media. Now, the child was with her grandparents, and the grandmother did give these women permission to take the child into the plane's bathroom as punishment. Quote, we won't let you out unless you stop crying. That's what one woman tells the wailing girl as she reaches for the door. One of the women posted a video of the incident to social media in which she boasted of the tactic, but the video came down amid a furious backlash. Now, the incident took place on an airline's flight. Oh, between two different cities in China, because I can't pronounce it. Mm-hmm. Now, the airline initially <laughs> seemed to side with the women, saying they were trying to, quote, educate the child. But it did apologize the next day. 
thousands of commenters said that the women overstepped, even with the grandmother's uh, permission. Quote, adults in their 30s can have emotional breakdowns, but people don't allow toddlers to have theirs. That's one comment. Now, the incident, it taps to an issue in China known as bear children. So you have tiger moms. These are bear children. And that refers to young children thought to be spoiled and ill-behaved. In recent years, video clips of kids shouting and running around and kicking seats, they've been going viral on social media, along with the rising sentiment that strangers should be allowed to intervene. Now, the woman who posted the video, initially, she defended herself along these lines, saying, I prefer to take action rather than be a bystander. I just wanted to calm the child down and let everyone rest. So take it as you will. My particular position, like, you just can't. Look, nobody likes a crank baby on a plane. It's annoying. And we would all love to grab that kid and shut it up. But you don't. Because you no. shouldn't. Yeah, that's all. We move on to the next story. Man by the name of Sandy Snakenberg. He considers himself a pirate, but not the kind who robs people of the gold. He is a self-proclaimed bubble pirate, a performance artist who blows bubbles large enough to surround a person, which apparently is a crime in San Diego. Those things are kind of awesome. And also, you said? No, they're awesome. Oh, they are awesome. Right, so he's just making the giant bubbles. He goes to a public park. The kids love it. That's basically what he's doing. But he was making desk-sized bubbles for, uh, bubbles for children at a park near La Hala Cove when two city park rangers threatened to write him a citation for littering. Quote, it's littering and bubble form. That according to Ranger Roberto Behar. Now, the bubble pirate, he continued with his act, and he was cited for littering prohibited fluids. Keep in mind, it's just soap and water. Now, the city code for littering does not mention fluids. Snakenberg, the so-called bubbleologist, he says the liquid used to make the bubbles, again, is mostly water and dish soap. Quote, they were really reaching, trying to find a reason to stop me. He says he was arguing a citation as part of an effort to target street vendors and performance artists in high traffic areas. But a city spokesman said the residents have a right to engage in expressive activity in city parks, including artistic expression, but must abide by city codes and all regulations, including those related to littering and waste disposal. Now, Snakenberg, he was warned several times that the residual substance from the bubbles are in violation of the littering code and could hurt the grass. They added that the rangers, they issued the lowest level citation available. Now, Snakenberg, he says he's a disabled Navy veteran. He lives in his van, says he plans to fight the ticket and the fine, uh, which will be determined by a judge at a court appearance uh, next month. He says, I'm not doing anything wrong. I'm just making bubbles for the kids. I've been doing this for years. They had a hair up their ass in here. Okay. That is the city. A little overreactive, I think, to making bubbles. And now we go to India, where a teenager was accused of emotional blackmail after going on a hunger strike for three days to pressure his mother into buying him an iPhone. Oh, now, my God. Oh, yeah. A short video shot by the smartphone shop owner went viral last week for featuring a teenage boy who confessed to going on a hunger strike for three days to convince his mother to buy him a new iPhone. Now, the woman who makes a living by selling flowers outside of a temple, is also featured in the video and has a facial expression that pretty much says everything about her inner struggle. Well, shared by uh, a journalist over there, the video has now been viewed over a million times and it sparked a heated debate about gadgets as a status symbol and the entitlement of younger generations. Quote, this is from the mother. I sell flowers outside of a temple. I gave him the money to buy the phone because he did not eat anything for three days. I'm happy, but I want him to earn it and bring the money back. Right. Now, the teen's attitude toward his mother has attracted a lot of criticism on the line, with many social media users accusing him of financial and emotional torture and insensibility towards his parent. Knowing that she sold flowers for a living, he still insisted that she buy him a smartphone that he knew they couldn't really afford. And people go on to comment on that one way or another, but essentially, that's his story. Now, keep in mind, it was weird enough that the video that's making the rounds it was shot by the guy that owns the store. Like, this is effed up. I'm going to take his money and give him the phone, but this is effed up. And I want the world to see. So, again, we have the two Chinese ladies on a flight. They took someone else's uh, crying toddler into the bathroom and wouldn't let her out until she stopped crying. Which, incidentally, if you watch the video, only made her cry more. Uh, we have the city of San Diego, who's coming down on the bubble pirates, as it were. There's a guy in a park making bubbles for kids, as he has done for years. And finally, the kid in India that went on the three-day hunger strike to pressure his mom into buying him an iPhone. So are we getting on the... Are we upset with the kid or the mom for the hunger strike? 
the hunger strike for me it would be the kid. That's what I thought. I'm just trying to decide. So, I mean, if you think she sucks, you know. Oh, this is a teenager. I mean, at that point in time, you, you not just you make the most logical decisions, but you still can make decisions. Yeah, you still make decisions. Well, he's old enough to know. Yeah. Yeah, that's just. I mean, that's just. The, that's just. A, that's just a bad kid. I'm not going to eat until you give me an iPhone. I mean, my initial thought is. Like, I kind of, I think the women in China suck the most. Just well, they had the grandmother's permission. They, yeah. I don't like it, but I am saying it's not like they snatched They had the, the grandmother, student. you're right, and you're right. I forgot that they had the grandma's permission, but also, like, that's just not going to help. It didn't. This right. kid does not know you, and you, you're trapped. And the kid was, like, around one or one and a half, so old enough to know that I, I don't want to be here with these people. I kept reaching mm-hmm. for the door, and they're like, nope, we're not letting you out. Or the... The kid in India sucks too. Yeah, because it's like you gotta risk your health because mom won't buy you a new iPhone. No, he's not because your mom's not gonna let you hunger strike. I know. I just like and you yeah. try like if I don't know you, and you said I go on a hunger strike. Well, you're gonna starve to death. If it's my kid, it's like oh god damn it. I guess in the end, I, I'm I'm gonna just say the park rangers suck the least, only because that seems like such a silly thing that hopefully the bubble pirate won't go to like won't have to do real. Time or pay a lot of money. Yeah, well, there's right. an oil spill. They use dishwashing soap to clean the animals off in the ocean. Only Dawn. Well, that's true. But you look, and it's not like he's putting. It's not like he's just running up to kids and being like, "I put you in a bubble." No, no. no. Like, he is in the one parents. spot, and right, you go over to him because the kids are super excited. And they show not at some stills of his bubbles. Dude's got some masterful bubble work. I right. give him yeah. that. Okay, I'm going to say the uh, the guy blowing bubbles, and the cops just told him to beat it and gave him a citation. Uh, I was going to say he sucks the least. But I'm going to go with a teenager in India because you know what? Starve to death, brother. Yeah. You're a teenager. I don't care if you don't eat for the entire week. That is on you, man. But when it's your kid, yeah, you're not well, going to let it happen. Well, I mean, look, if, he, if I get the thing about a hunger strike like is hell. Like, well, guys do it in jail. And I asked this as a child of my mother. I'm like, how is this a problem? She's like, well, blah, 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 the prison. I was, right. But he's making this decision and I'm already paying for him to be there. I'm like, and to this day. I don't effing care. You want a hunger strike, you're going to die. That's stupid to me. My kid, you're always more protective of. Like, even though it's as yeah. stupid as F. Was he still drinking water? <laughs> Probably. And here's the problem. You're See, as a parent, if he's still you're drinking- like, F you, dude. I'm not doing that. But then now your kid is 72 hours into it, and you realize, like, oh, my God. Okay. He's still drinking water, though. I, I'd let <laughs> How him many go. days are you giving him if he's drinking water? Ten. <laughs> Debate continues on Who Sucks Less if you follow KISW on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Shot the day's coming up. You are listening to The Men's Room. This episode is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Whether you love true crime or comedy, celebrity interviews or news, you call the shots on what's in your podcast queue. And guess what? Now you can call them on your auto insurance, too, with the Name Your Price tool from Progressive. It works just the way it sounds. You tell Progressive how much you want to pay for car insurance, and they'll show you coverage options that fit your budget. Get your quote today at Progressive.com to join the over 28 million drivers who trust Progressive. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Price and coverage match limited by state law. Hey, it's Doug. Suicide is something that affects all of us, and we can all play a part in saving lives. Make a difference in your community by walking out of the darkness with us on Sunday, October 13th at Fisher Pavilion at Seattle Center. Help spread awareness and understanding. Send the message that help is available and raise funds for the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. Register today at AFSP.org slash Seattle. That's AFSP.org slash Seattle. It's better over here. AT&T customers, switching to T-Mobile has never been easier. We'll pay off your existing phone and give you a new one free, all on America's largest 5G network. Visit T-Mobile.com slash Carrier Freedom to switch today. Pay off up to $650 via virtual prepaid MasterCard in 15 days. Free phone up to $830 via 24-monthly bill credits plus tax. Qualifying port and trade-in service on Go 5G next and credit required. Contact us before canceling entire account to continue bill credits or credit stop and balance and required finance agreement is due. The best thing about the Seattle International Auto Show is everything. It's the best place to turn questions into answers. Compare the newest models from major manufacturers. Gas power, hybrid, and EV all under one roof. See them, touch them, drive them at the Seattle International Auto Show presented by BECU. Live at Lumen Field Event Center, Thursday through Sunday, November 14th through 17th. Discover your drive. For tickets and info, visit seattleautoshow.com today. 
99.9 KISW. The shenanigans continue. This is the men's room with Miles and Thrill. All right, check out just minutes. We'll drink and toast with the shot of the day. And we do have your headlines on the way one hour from now. Or at 550. 550. Yeah, whatever. We'll get close to it. Up at first, quick check out Mike Hogg and some of the stories and headlines he is not working on. Thank you, Miles. A new study has found that regular use of your mobile phone is linked to the risk of heart disease. Oh, uh, probably based on inactivity. It's inactivity. It is screwing with your sleep schedule because you're you're staying awake scrolling on your phone, and it's also even you know with the blue light, you're not getting to sleep fast enough nor nor restful enough. And then it is uh, basically the drama that you're scrolling through on social media and whatnot, and the news that you're reading all the time. Sure, it's yep, screwing yep. with your heart, man. It's it's mm-hmm. it's uh, causing depression. It's causing anxiety, and it's it's screwing up your when heart. I, uh, I go to bed, I put the phone away and pick up a book as you should, and that makes me go to sleep faster. And oh, the yeah. book's good. I mean, is it good? It's not bad. What's the book? How to Quit Smoking, Ted. Oh. All right. Hey, you know what? A lot, lot you can learn there, Miles. I got through 50 pages last night. All right. Yeah. Jesus. Were you smoking while you did it? <laughs> I got up this morning and had one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it ain't going to happen overnight. No, it's not. That's probably the first thing they teach you. Yeah. <clears throat> According to a new study, owning a pet won't make you happier. It depends <sighs> on the pet. Huh. Well. All right. I, I think mean, it's yes one of those. No, I think like moment to mo- it's like your kids. They drive you absolutely bat as crazy. Right. But when you strip it all away, they definitely have elevated my life. And, and same thing with the pets. Like you know, yeah, you poop down the stairs. I am pissed. I come home, you lick my bald head every goddamn morning. It's annoying. The cat screaming up the stairs. I get it, but. They do bring, well, know, just this weird certain joy. But there are those people, and I know, and I am surrounded by these people that, <laughs> not no, no, not you guys, that they have a void in their life. They have something that is missing that, they, that, that can only come from within themselves, but they don't know that. Mm-hmm. I'm missing something, to, so I need pets. I need kids. I need whatever it is, because that, that, that'll make it better. Sure. No, it won't. No, it, it simply really won't. won't make it better. So... To say, you know, get a pet, it'll make you feel better. No, it's something to try to help kind of enlighten you a little bit and give your life a little bit more focus and whatnot. Sure. It can make your life happier. It can, but yeah. yeah. But Not ultimately, just by its nature. Right. You mm. need to fix yourself along with the process as the whole On thing. On anything. Absolutely. On anything. Right. So don't don't look for any outside force to fix what you've got screwed up inside is, mm. is really what I'm what I'm getting at here. But it doesn't matter how many cats you get. Oh, yeah. I've just met people like, why do you have seven cats? Well, it just brings me... Yeah, but you seem awful. Right. Do, do the cats bring you joy, or does getting the cat cats. bring you joy? You know what? There, there's a huge difference. Right? <laughs> getting the cat I, brings I you like, joy. I do like a cat, though. Absolutely. Yeah. Miles, you are a cat guy. You can yeah. enjoy having hey, a cat, cat in your house. And yeah. it doesn't matter the cat. No. Feral, no, crazy. one-legged, right. Puma. One. <laughs> right. Puma. Raccoon. Yeah. Who cares? Bring it inside. <laughs> Raccoon, close <laughs> enough to a cat. <laughs> Not a huge cat guy. I like some of them. Yeah. But you having a... down with Linus earlier. Yeah. I like my guy Potato up north. Yeah. But having a raccoon... That would be cool. <laughs> <laughs> like, that would just be odd enough where, like, I wouldn't even... Like, I'd tell everyone... Like, I, some people I would try not to tell. Just be like, yeah, come on over. <laughs> yeah, go in, the, go in the room where the TV is. <laughs> and he's just sitting there chilling. <laughs> but you have to make sure people know it's a pet. Yeah, you know, that's so, fair call. Because they walk into the room, they just see a raccoon, assume it's trash panda variety, like pick up the closest <laughs> chair, and now they're beating your pet. To I death. probably would say, hey, I got a new pet. <laughs> Check it out. There you go. Y'all, don't mind the raccoon. His name's Bandit. He lives with me, man. He's cool. <laughs> Bandit. What'd you name him, Bandit? You're damn right I named Come him. Come on, Bandit. man. That's just some garden. Bandit, Wait. that's a good pet's name, and it's a raccoon. And it's just too obvious. So? Name so is like, Fido. How about Nick? Why? Why not? That's literally it. That's what I got. What's your raccoon's name, Nick? Nick. Is there no famous raccoons? Rocky Raccoon. Rocky Raccoon. There's right. Who is Rocky? From uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. Oh, Rocket. Rocket. My yeah. bad. Rocket. Uh, well, there was a Rocky Raccoon. Rocky Beatles was a squirrel. song. Okay. He was on the song? Ranger Rick. What was that raccoon's name? In the Boy Scout magazine. Lord, I don't know. Was it Ranger Rick? I only, I, I only knew. I only knew. Ted and I were looking at each other. Like, yeah, I was like, "What the, the hell's burrow? Ranger Rick?" The Boy Scout magazine. You don't get that subscription <laughs> anymore. <laughs> Probably canceled it with the SI. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, we, they're swimsuit <laughs> edition. <laughs> exactly. Oh my god. No, we used to get a magazine like every month or something. Oh lordy, a survey found how much money it would take to feel wealthy in Washington D.C. A whopping two point eight million dollars. 
If you live there, you're probably doing pretty well. I'm, <sighs> but wouldn't you say the same for Seattle, San Francisco, right. New York City? I mean, certain All cities right. are okay. And just obviously, the line ridiculous. that you need to cross to be like, okay, I am officially wealthy changes. However, 2.8 million, I feel like anywhere in okay. this country, so, you're wealthy. You're so, yes. you feel wealthy. Right. so, U.S. Open is going on in uh, New York, right? All right. Um, you would know better than me. Queens. So, they have this drink that's taken off. It's a big deal. It's okay. got like little ice balls of fruit in it, shaped like tennis balls. And okay. I Kind of in the transfusion well of, sure. of drinks. But it's like taking the open by storm. Okay. Everyone wants one of these things. They're drinking them like crazy. The only bitch is the drink is too expensive, you see. Because when they debuted it the a, honey and deuce. And a, half, a couple of years the ago, honey deuce. it was $10. Because tennis, okay. It's $10. Now the drink is $23. Dear and God. I just thought to myself, I just paid $25 for a shot at Climate Pledge the other night, which is the equivalent to one drink. So if New York says this is expensive, yeah. then I know that I am living in an expensive place by going to an entertainment venue, and the drinks are more expensive than the frickin' U.S. Open in New York. And just, you got Jack Daniels. I got Jack on just, ice. Just bring a bottle with you, Miles. You know? Leave it in the car. They are, they, the rich people in New York are bitching about the price <laughs> of the drink. Right. And ours are more expensive oh, to go see Sticks. I mean, you're right. I, I didn't really think about it when yeah. I read that story. But you're right. Everybody's like, geez, it's $23. But like... Hey. I think a can of like an IPA, twelve ounce, is like seventeen in that arena. Right. Yeah, we uh, going to Delaware a couple weeks ago, and a lot of family in Philadelphia, and like everyone in the country, they're bitching about rising prices. But one of the things they bitched about the gas prices, it was three thirteen a gallon, and they're complaining. They're complaining. Oh, and this is Philadelphia. It's a major ass city, right? This yeah. is not you know Podunk, Oklahoma. So I just said like. You guys can piss them on all you would like to do, hey. and I'm sure it's more expensive now. And we told them the average cost in Seattle, and they were like, what? I was yeah. like, right, I mean, there's no rhyme or reason for it. It's just what we do here. But yeah. I'm like, yeah, no. If a gas station in Seattle offered three thirteen a gallon, that line would be it nine would be blocks drained within long. The, within the hour. Yeah, they could not believe. It. And I go, oh no, we live there. We know. Yeah. yeah, stop bitching, gentlemen. Our society has progressed in many fantastic ways over the years, but there are still those minor annoyances that we haven't quite found the solutions to yet. Those little things that we call first world problems, and it's time that we address them all. The men's room top ten. The men's room top ten. Ten. Little annoyances we really shouldn't have to deal with anymore. Let's go with the one we're all thinking and are too afraid to say out loud. Relationships. They may be fine for some of you who are lucky enough to find one, one person who decided, eh, you'll do. But is that what we're really destined for? The, well, they're out of Reese's peanut butter cups. Guess I'll go with a Clark bar. A Clark bar? No one says, ooh, a Clark bar. Yummy. I'll take 20. No, you're desperate. So you pull the trigger knowing disappointment is one bite away. That is your relationship. I love a Clark bar. How did I know you would like the Clark bar, Miles? It's a, it's awesome. What uh, the yeah. hell is a Clark bar? I've never same, heard it's, of it's this. It's the same as like basically the Heath bar that Steve gets, but it's a Pittsburgh thing. I get a Twix. <laughs> uh, well, no, but you, you know, the, the toffee kind of thing. It's kind of like a toffee crunch. I mean, I'm not against Heath, but I spend my money on uh, score. 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 Like a score, yeah, score, score. Score. Sorry. Score. Oh, my God. The duck I mean, on Clark bar. Clark yeah. bars are great. Just saying. <laughs> I knew as soon as I heard that, I was like, Miles is going to, for whatever <laughs> yes. reason, defend the duck on Clark Bar. Clark Bar's awesome. Because you're 100 years old. <laughs> I haven't seen them. <laughs> haven't real seen milk them chocolate, since. real peanut butter crunch. But yeah. that also makes sense where you grew up. If it's a Pittsburgh thing, yeah. Yeah. you probably grew up on it. <laughs> oh, man, that was that was a highlight of my week. Dear God, Miles. The Clark Bar? Just Shoot. get a Butterfinger, dude. It, pretty well close to that. It's, what it's it close is. to that. The Clark Bar tastes better. <laughs> It does. It's like the potato chips in Pennsylvania. You can't beat them sad, anywhere around the world. They sad make the best. life you lived. Yeah. Well, the one not to do West Virginia, man. What day of the week did you get the Clark Bar? Oh, whenever I got uh, my allowance, which was like $3 a week. 
Um, All right. My mom had a thing. When she'd get home from work on Fridays, we'd always go to the store and get a candy bar. Mm -hmm. Nice. It also took me till I was probably 12 or 13 to realize that it w she got paid every Friday. Mm -hmm. So I, she always got a payday. So I, as a uh, child, I assumed if you didn't have a job, you couldn't, you could, get, you couldn't get a payday. Yeah. <laughs> that is true. So these are. How old are you, son? Yeah, you got to get something. Yeah, that's right? not your payday, fella. Yeah. So these are 10 little annoyances that we really shouldn't have to deal with. They start with spam and scam calls and emails. Well, yeah. Every freaking day. No kidding, dude. And at least the phone's starting to recognize it. Too. Mine today was, hey, how's your weekend going? I really wanted to text back. It's freaking Wednesday, dude. All right, come on. But I, you don't want to respond to it. Nope. Hey, is this my friend? Uh, That's what I was going to say. I'm so afraid to respond to any of them because you don't know if it's fishing or whatever. Mm -hmm. But, like, I feel bad. There's one old broad, and I looked it up. Minnesota. She keeps asking about some goddamn reunion. Oh. She's like, I talked to Angela. And it's like the don't reunion. Answer it. I know. It's like the reunion in 1980. And I'm just like, <laughs> I'm not going to answer it. But, like, I really think it's just some old lady who's a couple numbers Come off. Come on, Teddy. <laughs> 206. <laughs> yeah. A better, uh, uh, some more annoyances. A better way to type on TV remotes. Uh, well, I mean, they're fine. Dude. Once it's up on the screen. Yeah, you're right. It's a pain in the butt. That takes a while. It does. You know uh, what? I'll, I will be honest. I'm thinking, like, it's not that bad. The truth is, I don't know. Typing in your when email I get to that, sucks. I call my son over or the what? Like, hey, passwords. Yeah. Yeah, because, like, right on a computer, if you miss a password... It's not that big of a deal, but I'm with you. If I screw it up trying to log in, or for some reason I'm logged out on one of those, and it's like, oh, God damn it. Damn it. <laughs> Cereal bags not having a zipper closure. That is really a good point. Yeah. <laughs> I got Why a chip yet? clip on mine now. No, but it's just practical. Hot dog buns not being sold in the same number as hot dogs. That, that's ah. been a problem for years. And is no that one still knows true? Yes. 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 How? Hot dogs come in a package of like six, uh, uh, eight, and then buns come in a package of six. Or ten. Something like that. Either yeah. way, I feel like they make hot dogs, and depending on the brand of hot dog, there's eight of them, and the pack, the rolls usually have eight. eight. Take a look around your grocery store next time, Ted Smith. Mm -hmm. Either way, if you got buns, you've won the game. I don't That's care right. if you have two extra or two less. <laughs> I mean, as long as you got the buns. Uploading your resume, then having to enter everything on the resume on the next screen. Again, these are uh, ten little annoyances we really shouldn't have to deal with anymore. Uh, please upload your resume. It's very important. Now, please tell us your name, your address, your phone oh, number, right, your password, right, right, right. history, some references that you might have. Music volumes in movies being much louder than the dialogue. And the commercials. Well, the trailers are louder. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. The previews. The, way I, I don't, the one that throws me off is just some shows you watch. I always bring up Peaky Blinders. Oh, yeah. But it's like they're freaking whispering. Most of the time, so you crank it up. We need to go down to the alley yeah, and take but, care of everything. Right, but that, that's the issue. It's a gangster show. So right. the, it, there's loud stuff. Right. But just boost the boost the, the, the dialogue up or a little bit. Or there's some channels where the, the, the commercial volume is, yeah, no is way yeah. different than the actual show volume. I want to say the Fed actually ruled against that, but everyone's ignored it anyway. They, it's right. It's only been like the last ten or twenty years, right? Because they did it all the time back in the right. day. The TV commercials would be louder than what you're watching, and I want right. to say the Fed did rule on something. Where it's like, don't do that. And everyone said okay, and then they're doing it anyway. Right? Do you have a standard volume you stay at? Yeah. No. Basically, depends on the channel. I think they're all different. Like for me, my subscription services don't have the same volume level. That's true. As That's true. Just yeah. my regular uh, whatever YouTube TV. Mm -hmm. Ten little annoyances we really shouldn't have to deal with anymore. The thin metal handles on cans of paint. Is there really no better way to carry paint than by garrot? <laughs> I got no problem with a little thin. So what do they want? Bigger handles? Something that doesn't cut into your fingers as you're as you're carrying it around. Oh. Yeah. Basically. All Basically. right. I mean, I haven't carried a lot of paint lately, but I was like, I didn't think of that one being that big of an issue. All wireless controller devices should have an easy way to locate them. If I can't find my TV remote, video game controller, etc., it should be able to go over to the device, hit a button, and then the device starts beeping. That's not a bad idea. No. Not a bad idea at all. Why, yeah. can't, why can't they design a pasta bag that doesn't rip all the way down spraying dried pasta all over the countertop? <laughs> You just need to do better. Because that's the fun. Back to, back to the Ziploc. I would say also, they need to make a law for chip companies. Like, I'm not going to call anybody out, but certain brand I like, you're just supposed to, like, tear off the side. Yeah. Right. Just, like, can we make them all just open up in the center like you open up chips? Right. Well, also, too, that's what we're but, going to do. But, 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 back to the cereal. You should have a Ziploc on the top. Yeah. For, for the bigger family size, not an individual one, necessarily. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's not bad, but also, I feel like 
the Ziploc thing on, on pre-made stuff never works. Uh, uh, on, on that token, when a food package says peel here, tear here, and it never effing works, and you need to get scissors or a knife to it open it. It does on sliced cheese. Tell right. sliced cheese, the zipper, yes. it works. It does work. It seals it back. It's very, very good. That's, just, yeah, that's one trash you up a wall. I need to go to the salami. <laughs> Those stickers on products that leave sticker residue when pulling them off. So now you have sticky goo with paper bits on your cup. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I feel yep. that one. Especially when it's a high-ticket item, like a gas grill. Right. Oh, one of those things. Or a couch. The extremely poor audio quality of fast food drive through speakers. How in 2024 can it even sound that bad? <laughs> Please pull around to the side window with a 449. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. And then this is the last <laughs> little annoyance that we really shouldn't have to deal with anymore. Since we can see billions of light years away, we put those satellites into orbit. Let's make this clear. We sent out a rocket that just had it pass by a meteor and scrape by and then come back to Earth. Thousands of man hours went into calculations and planning for that. But the best way to check a prostate is still by sticking a finger up there. <laughs> <laughs> the best way. We haven't. <laughs> back to the butterfinger. It's just our preference. <laughs> The Clark Bar. Yeah. A man in Florida let a fellow driver know that he had a nice car, and you won't believe how the man responded to the compliment, what, uh, Miles. How did he respond to that? I'll bet it at 5.50. Thank you, sir. Headlines are coming up at 5.50. In the meantime, let's get a contestant on the line for Profile This at 206-803-ROCK. Have we made it to drinking time? This episode is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Whether you love true crime or comedy, celebrity interviews or news, you call the shots on what's in your podcast queue. And guess what? Now you can call them on your auto insurance, too, with the Name Your Price tool from Progressive. It works just the way it sounds. You tell Progressive how much you want to pay for car insurance, and they'll show you coverage options that fit your budget. Get your quote today at Progressive.com to join the over 28 million drivers who trust Progressive. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Price and coverage match limited by state law. This episode is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Whether you love true crime or comedy, celebrity interviews or news, you call the shots on what's in your podcast queue. And guess what? Now you can call them on your auto insurance, too, with the Name Your Price tool from Progressive. It works just the way it sounds. You tell Progressive how much you want to pay for car insurance, and they'll show you coverage options that fit your budget. Get your quote today at Progressive.com to join the over 28 million drivers who trust Progressive. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Price and coverage match limited by state law. Hey, it's Doug. Suicide is something that affects all of us, and we can all play a part in saving lives. Make a difference in your community by walking out of the darkness with us on Sunday, October 13th at Fisher Pavilion at Seattle Center. Help spread awareness and understanding. Send the message that help is available and raise funds for the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. Register today at AFSP.org slash Seattle. That's AFSP.org slash Seattle. This episode is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Whether you love true crime or comedy, celebrity interviews or news, you call the shots on what's in your podcast queue. And guess what? Now you can call them on your auto insurance too with the Name Your Price tool from Progressive. It works just the way it sounds. You tell Progressive how much you want to pay for car insurance and they'll show you coverage options that fit your budget. Get your quote today at Progressive.com to join the over 28 million drivers who trust Progressive. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Price and coverage match limited by state law. Hey, it's Doug. Suicide is something that affects all of us, and we can all play a part in saving lives. Make a difference in your community by walking out of the darkness with us on Sunday, October 13th at Fisher Pavilion at Seattle Center. Help spread awareness and understanding. Send the message that help is available and raise funds for the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. Register today at AFSP.org slash Seattle. That's AFSP.org slash Seattle. Presented by T-Mobile, the official wireless partner of Odyssey Sports. With an awesome network and great savings, there's never been a better time to join T-Mobile. Visit your neighborhood store to make the switch today. What's up? It's your boy, the Ted Smith from the Men's Room. And did you know I have a podcast? Well, I do. The Podcast. New episodes uploaded every Wednesday on the Odyssey app. Somebody out there deserves to be recognized. And the men's room knows just who it is. So to you, we say, bottoms up, sailor. 
You're the toast of our shot of the day. Good job, it is. And as usual, we had Tuesday drink task and Steve and Thrill Hill to find out who we're toasted. Yes, indeed. And today we toast 24 year old Christopher Danzel of Lansdale, Pennsylvania. Now, Mike, you and I. We believe there should be a legal amendment where it's like, like you can get charged with whatever crime you did. Oh, yes. But then if you're really stupid, it's just an additional fine. Indeed. This is an example of what we're talking about. So Christopher, he stole a car from a library parking lot. Right? Some guy left his green 2023 Subaru Forester running, and Chris took off in it. But he didn't just take it for a joyride. He drove it to a police station. But the reason he went there is even dumber than you think. You see... Apparently, he had an earlier run-in with the cops. So he drove the stolen car to the police station because he asked the cops to give him his illegal drugs back. They turned him down, obviously. Now, they didn't realize that he was in a stolen car at that point. But just moments later, they pieced it together when they then got a report that he just used it as a getaway car for another crime because... Before he even drove to the police station, he tried to shoplift some stuff from a nearby Target and was seen speeding off on the same green Subaru. So they tracked him down and they arrested him. He's now facing two felony charges for unlawful taking and receiving stolen property, plus a misdemeanor charge for unauthorized use of a car. This guy steals a car, drives to a police station in a stolen car after using the stolen car as a getaway vehicle. After trying to shoplift Target, and the only reason you drove to the police station was to ask for your drugs back? <laughs> we need the stupid charge. So we pour this booze, and we drink this booze, because we think it's yummy. Yummy! yummy. So over the tongue and down the throat to party in our tummies. Down, down the whole lot, bitch, the men's room presents Profile This. That's Steve Throw Hook to please everyone how Profile This is played. I sure can, Miles. It's a simple game where we share with you a real life news story, something that happened right here on planet Earth. Earth, 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 Earth. And as you listen to the story, based on the stereotypes you believe to be true of people and the decisions that people make, we'll ask you what it is you think makes the story a story. Hello, Sammy. Welcome to the men's room. Hola, guys. Hola. Hola. All right, Shammy. You understand how this here game is played? I think so. All right. Well, you have your choice of one <laughs> of three categories. I admire the she honesty. Right. She thinks so. She thinks so. We'll find out. We'll find out that. Uh, you have your choice of one of three stories. So today, your categories are interior decorating, where you guess the foreign object that ended up on the inside of someone. Hit me with your best shot, where you guess the unconventional object that someone chose to use as a weapon. And finally today, animalize this, where you guess the animal responsible for causing the problem. Mm, let's do hit me with your best shot. Hit me with your best shot. Fire away. All right, here's your story. It turns out the customer is not always right. Sometimes they do stuff that's straight up wrong, like smacking their server in the face with something. Surveillance video from a Nando's restaurant, that's a a popular fast food chain in the UK, it captured the viral moment, showing a man in a hoodie and beanie grabbing something and smacking a waitress across the face when she puts the family of three's dinner on the table. Now, the server is clearly stunned after taking the object to the face and then runs off. Meanwhile, the man, woman, and child at the table, they quickly exit the restaurant. Now, it's not clear what motivated the slap, Though a woman claiming to be the stricken server in the video later posted about the incident, she says the cops totally screwed up their handling of it. The woman, whose account says her name is Zara, claims cops were in the restaurant when this all went down, and she claims they did nothing to help her. They didn't even check the uh, closed-circuit television to review the incident. That's according to her. So, so far, no arrests have been made. But the question for you is, what did the waitress take to the face from the father of the party of three. Did she get slapped in the face with a menu? Did she get hit in the face with a chicken leg? Did she get hit in the face with the pepper grinder? Or did she get hit in the face with a dinner plate? So menu, chicken leg, pepper grinder, or dinner plate. What did this guy pick up and slap her in the face with? Ooh, um... Oh, man. Did it say there was any injuries to the server? She does not say there were any injuries other than she just took a, took an object to the face and is mad about it. <laughs> and did you say what kind of, what the name of the restaurant again, please? Nando's. N-A-N-D-O. Oh, it's chicken. Chicken, chicken leg. Chicken. Okay. 
Okay, Ted's going chicken wings. Um, chicken okay, legs. I'm going to go pepper or chicken legs. I'm going to go pepper or grinder. Is that what you'd grab off the table to hit your weight person with? <laughs> I played the fifth. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how restaurants uh, in, in England work, but typically they take the menu after you order. They're bringing the food. But I'm because of that, I'm going to say menu, just because I don't know how that works over there. All right, what did she get slapped in the face with? A menu, a chicken leg, a pepper grinder, or a dinner plate? We'll find out next. That was a tease. This episode is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Whether you love true crime or comedy, celebrity interviews or news, you call the shots on what's in your podcast queue. And guess what? Now you can call them on your auto insurance, too, with the Name Your Price tool from Progressive. It works just the way it sounds. You tell Progressive how much you want to pay for car insurance, and they'll show you coverage options that fit your budget. Get your quote today at Progressive.com to join the over 28 million drivers who trust Progressive. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Price and coverage match limited by state law. Hey, it's Doug. Suicide is something that affects all of us, and we can all play a part in saving lives. Make a difference in your community by walking out of the darkness with us on Sunday, October 13th at Fisher Pavilion at Seattle Center. Help spread awareness and understanding. Send the message that help is available and raise funds for the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. Register today at AFSP.org slash Seattle. That's AFSP.org slash Seattle. Hey, it's Doug. Suicide is something that affects all of us, and we can all play a part in saving lives. Make a difference in your community by walking out of the darkness with us on Sunday, October 13th at Fisher Pavilion at Seattle Center. Help spread awareness and understanding. Send the message that help is available and raise funds for the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. Register today at AFSP.org Seattle. That's AFSP.org Seattle. 99.9 KISW. We return to the men's room with Miles and Thrill. Categories hit me with their best shot on profile. Let's get a customer in a restaurant to uh, grab something and slap their server in the face with it. There were actually cops in the restaurant at the time. Yeah. No charges were filed. But what did the waitress say she was hit in the face with? A menu, a chicken leg, pepper grinder, or a dinner plate? And Sammy, that is the very question that we posed to you. Let us start with Miles Montgomery. You want the old menu? <laughs> It was not a menu to the face. Now, D.T. Smith, you know your nanos, so you're like, chicken leg, dude. It's going to yeah. be a chicken leg. It was not a chicken leg. Now, to your point, I did Google their menu to see what they have to make it more realistic because I had a feeling I'm like, Ted's going to effing know what's on this menu. Seriously, I'm like, let me see what they've got there. So I saw the chicken leg. I'm like, good one. And uh, Sa- <laughs> Sammy, we know for a fact that uh, if you get mad at a restaurant and there's a pepper grinder, you're, you're, you're taking it in someone's face. However, not no. this time. Believe it or not, dude picked up a dinner plate and hit her in the face with it. Oh, wow. A oh, dinner. And she has no idea why. She might know why. She has not said why, but there's she's okay. not saying why. And I guess whatever video they have, no one can piece together where the family got angry about anything? Okay, I don't know. You yeah. said it was the UK, right? It's the UK, yeah. That's also like Nan. Like they're huge on Indian foods. So I just, yeah. Honestly, I just assumed it was a leg of tandoori chicken. I said, I looked at the menu. I'm like, this actually looks really good. But yeah, that's why I put chicken leg on there. Now for all TV news all the time, and it's time for TV time with Ted. And now, because your pathetic life is confined to countless hours in front of a talking box, the men's room presents TV time with Ted. All right. In the football season, everybody's back at work. So your choices today. You got the Jimmies, Fallon and Kimmel, Stephen Colbert, Seth Meyers, or Ted Smith. Is it Ted or is it late night? It is right there. The title is guys have teams of talents and writers helping come up with their monologues each and every night. It is up to you to determine, is this an actual late night joking from whom? Or could it be a The Ted Smith original? This is a crazy story. An off-duty cop got arrested at a Kenny Chesney concert in Massachusetts after peeing on a woman's or random woman's cowboy boots. She turned around and saw him with a Bud Light in one hand and his junk in the other. So I think it's safe to say, Bud Light is back. Me, Ted Smith. Colbert. That's me. I was excited about that one. Yeah, typically it's Coors Light at those, right? Yeah, I mean, Corona, Coors Light. I think any light beer will pass. I just 
Bud Light makes it funnier. Students across the country are back in school. Of course, the first day of school or back to school is always emotional. This morning, my kids were crying when I put them on the bus, but I think it's mostly because it was a greyhound. <laughs> uh, Myers. Colbert. Fallon. Students across the country went back to school. Yeah, of course, the first day of school is always emotional. This morning, my kids were crying when I put them on the bus. And I think that's mostly because it was a greyhound. And I... NASA confirmed that two astronauts who were supposed to be on an eight-day trip will instead be stranded till 2025. What a nightmare. Imagine being stuck on a work, a work trip for eight months. Uh, hey, Deborah, you know how they say no one can hear you scream in space? Well, they could definitely hear you chew. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Seth Meyers, Fallon, Colbert. NASA confirmed that two astronauts who were supposed to take an eight-day trip to the International Space Station would instead be stranded up there until 2025. What a nightmare. Imagine being stuck in a work trip for six months. <laughs> uh, hey, Deborah, you know how they say in space, no one can hear you scream? Well, they can definitely hear you chew. That would be brutal. A beluga whale that was discovered in 2019 wearing Rus a Russian spy harness was found dead off the course of Norway. Even crazier, it died after falling out of an eight-story window. <laughs> <laughs> Seth. Yes, yeah, Seth. Yeah, that's Seth. A beluga whale that was discovered in 2019 wearing a Russian spy harness was found dead over the weekend in Norway. Even crazier, it died after falling out of an eighth-story window. <laughs> I wonder if we're ever going to start getting real spy animals. Remember, because we had some dolphins that were supposed to be smart or whatever. They were smart enough to roll the F out. Yeah. I don't know. Seems exciting. I'm sure we do. You just can't tell people. Those are ruins of all idea of being a spy animal. But you just think you'd see more of them. Really? Well, I guess technically dolphins and whales would be the best spy creatures. Probably. Because you can't catch them. Also, or it's like if it was a marland that you trade to be a spy, <laughs> like somebody's going to catch that thing. Yeah. How do you tell them their assignment? Yeah, I don't I need know. You to go way. here. Report back. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, does anybody in here watch Thousand Pound Sisters? No. I have, no, I, but I was in Baltimore. I watched the first, maybe the second season. All right, I was going to say, I thought you and, you and your wife had watched a few of them. Yeah, it was. I couldn't look away. <laughs> <laughs> it was a train wreck. So... Are, is it just that they're huge, or is that, are they Pretty supposed much. to be, like, getting surgeries so, and losing weight? Right. So the whole thing is that in that first season, one of them is 400 pounds, the other one is 600 pounds. That's why they make this out. Oh, the, it's the not thousand. even even split? No. Oh, no. Damn. So that's why they make this out. That's the, why the, the one gets seconds. The thousand one. I want the, the thousand, thin one. thousand pound sisters. But the whole idea is is that they are trying to trying to get a surgery that it, that is going to aid in their aid in their weight loss journey, right? And so the whole the, the the whole journey throughout the show is they go to the doctor that's that's a couple states away and he says, "Okay, I need you guys to lose this amount of weight before we can before we can perform the surgery." Blah 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 blah. One is able to accomplish it and get the surgery, the other one not so much. And and so that's that's when we get, go into the second season where now she's tr still trying to get the surgery. Meanwhile, the other one managed, you know, managed to get pregnant too fast, and mm. and just it's it's it's, it's trash. Team. You're looking good. Yeah. All right. So Amy, uh, was she the six or the four hundred? She was the four. She was All the right. one that was actually able to get the surgery. Find a fold. Find All a fold. Right. She was at a Tennessee safari park. Which, let's be honest, it right, sounds a little sketch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tennessee safari park. Yeah, she had her kids with them, four-year-old Gage, two-year-old Glenn, uh, plus a man named Brian Scott Norvin. Anyhow, at some point during the visit, she claimed she was bitten by a camel. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Why yeah. were you close enough to a camel to get doggone bit? It's a Tennessee safari park. Yeah, that's, that's good. See, of course they have camels. <laughs> Uh, I'm sorry, damn it. <laughs> while she was being treated, park employees noticed a suspicious smell and found pot and mushrooms just sitting in plain sight in her car. Uh, obviously, Amy and the other adult with her, they were arrested on drug possession and child endangerment charges. The kids were placed in the custody of other family members. Obviously, the mushrooms anywhere you go is going to get you in trouble. But also, sure. you got to remember, Tennessee is one of the it was one of the states left that has no. Like, it, it, weed is illegal. Right. 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 Producers of that show are going to be mad they weren't following him around still. 
Had to Because if you're going to do another season. I wouldn't be shocked if they are. I, yeah. You okay, can, maybe they it, are. Right. Sometimes this info will come out, and then you'll realize that the, the show actually uh, caught it on camera. Gotcha. Yeah. Ah, gotcha. okay. You know what I mean? Exactly. Think, think about it like all those inside, you know, behind-the-scenes shows you see now on uh, on Netflix or whatever with, like, Receiver. Mm-hmm. Now, we saw those guys playing those games, but now you get to, you go back and you're like, oh, the other cameras were there, too. Yeah. Well, they can't go to an amusement park. Uh... <laughs> Well, it's just kind of crazy too. Uh, she, you know, she shares her kids with her ex-husband, uh, who was they, a gem, by the way. He was fantastic. He was he was like the only re, uh, 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 redeemable character on that show. I also like. I get it, but you're in a state where it's not legal. Also, like you're at the park with your kids. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like you don't need to be roasting a bowl in the car right, right. before you walk in, or, or eating a eating a cap at a stem. And that's kind of been the wild. That's thing. mushroom talk. <laughs> the, the, the the wild thing is that Amy has kind of gone through this descent where it was she between the two of them she was the one that had her stuff together she was the one that knuckled down she started doing exercises she she changed up her diet she was able to lose the weight that she needed to in order to get the surgery like she had her stuff together her bills are paid as she said and Tammy was the tr- was was the problem child she was the one that took no responsibility for herself she she didn't didn't take any accountability for everything she made excuses for everything and she was just an all around bad person to everybody around. Her. But now the the <laughs> the weights have kind of tipped in, in the other direction, no no pun intended, where Tammy has, has finally gotten her stuff together and she's gotten her surgery. She's lost a ton of weight. She looks a lot better than she did. She looks a lot healthier than she did. And now Amy is just walling out. Yeah. She, she's combusting. For the record, TMZ say they spoke with the park owners. They doubt that Amy was bitten by one of their camels. Supposedly the cut in her arm is not indicative of a camel bite. So what in the world do they think it is? Somebody was hungry. <laughs> <laughs> I, who, who knows? I don't know. Maybe a scam to get money down. from the... I, I don't know. Oh, maybe. 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 You get your but name also, on the wall if you eat that whole thing. If I was on mushrooms and stoned, maybe maybe I thought... I was like, ah, a camel bit me. You might really believe that. Yeah, like it could have been something else, but like, I don't... I think camels have a huge mouth. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Like... It, I mean, even if a human, if a little kid was biting you, you would see the marks. Yeah. And I feel like with a camel, like that would be massive. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know. It, it's kind of weird and crazy, but <laughs> I've been by a camel. Those two are wild and crazy. Watching yeah. that show, it's like, how do you live? <laughs> Honestly, though. That, that's the entire question. Like, they open it like, all right, I'm going to make Tammy her dinner. And she made a freaking lasagna. She made pasta. She made a pizza. She made burgers. She made a steak. And that's dinner. Damn. I will say, I used to watch some of those shows where people were, like, extremely overweight. Like, you're saying, like, yeah. 500, 600 pounds. That sounds awful. But sometimes they, they do stuff like that. Or, like, this one guy, his mom, would, and he was, like, in his, he was, like, almost 30. His mom would just bring him home buckets, buckets of chicken. Yes. But I sat there. I was like, looks kind of good. <laughs> if it was a Sunday. Of course yeah. it does. Yeah. But you'll stop yourself. Well, eventually, I feel like you just get too full. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, look, We I, do. You have to yeah. try to eat that much. <laughs> uh, and how do you fund all that? That is so much groceries. To me, yeah, that's the bigger difference. Like, you can make that much food, but how do you just... Right. You can't move. What There's do you do to so make all much. this money? So, right. So that's a reality show, which we're inundated now. Sure. Mm-hmm. The last night, uh, I, I talk about this all the time. I think Vice, they have a series, right? It started with Dark Side of the Ring. Yeah. yeah right? Yeah, yeah. Then it was, you know, Dark Side of the 90s, this and that. So I started a new one last night, Dark Side of Reality TV. And I had kind of forgot about this one. Do you guys, and it's ironic, I never think about the goddamn animal a swan, but do you guys remember a show called The Swan? Uh, I remember maybe, the name, yeah. but I have no I don't remember what the hell it was. So this about. is early two thousands, right? Like reality shows are blowing up. This this whole one was they were gonna take women who weren't happy with their looks. Basically, you're an ugly duckling, we're gonna turn you into the beautiful swan. Okay. Now, I remember on the show I, I remember it now, it's like, oh yeah, that does seem kinda wild. <laughs> yep, the swan. Yeah, I think good God. The big issue they had with this one is that the woman that was running it, too, is like, you know, this is before it became super popular. Just make yourself a life coach. Yeah. She's like, we're going to life coach, career coach, this and that. And then also one of the selling points was like, hey, if you want plastic surgery, it'll be free. Right. You're going to have you're going to live here for however long. 
personal trainers, personal dietitian. Again, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna make you a better person. It's almost like being a celebrity and you just landed a specific role. Right. Well, you're gonna be a better person inside and out. Now, unfortunately, when they get there, even the guy that was like kind of the fame. If you saw this guy, he's a famous plastic surgeon. He was on a lot of these shows. Even he was like, "Oh, it got too crazy." Like they basically wanted to overhaul these women in like one day of surgery, and he's just like, "I will they kill them." Right. Yeah. Exactly. And he was like, "I don't want to be the front page of somebody dying." Then also, they hired. Uh, I can't. I think he's ex-military, but he's like a super personal trainer. But he doesn't know that they're getting all this stuff done. Okay. He doesn't know that the life coach basically is just like, you're not going to get any more done? Like, do you want to stay ugly? <laughs> like, so they're like pressuring him into it. The guy running the gym, like, he's putting him through the paces, but he doesn't realize like how bad they're hurting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's just, it's just insanity. Like the one woman, she was like, and like she's, she's not a bad looking woman, right? But she was just like 30 had gone through a divorce, this and that, and her, she was like, I'm getting into a new career. Like, I could use the other stuff about it. And then when she gets there, they're just like, you need to have more surgery. And she's like, I, I don't want to have oh, more God. surgery. And then the best part I love is at the end, right, they didn't they didn't have mirrors or anything. One woman basically is, like, crawling down the hall because she's in so much pain, screaming Jesus. and bleeding. Like, I want to go home. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, right? Oh my God. So at the end of the series, it's the big reveal, right? Uh, part of it's the big reveal. Then they're going to have this contest to see who's the most beautiful one. So the big reveal is they go in the mirror. They're all crying. They also said basically they they're were crying like, happy. Yes. Okay. But when you see it, you're like, it's kind of odd. Even I was like, were they that happy? They looked that much different. But they were like, oh, they grilled us. And we're like, we spent a lot of money on you. You better have a huge reaction. Wow. You better cry. You better act like this and that. Jeez. And then the whole thing was was to make them feel better, right? inside and out to make them feel beautiful but like once i saw myself let's say mike and i are on the show then mike and i gotta go up two by two and they go mike's better looking he gets on to the pageant oh. so it's kind of like we're making you feel better by breaking you down yes. that's basically what it was but also like the point was was like we'll do all this you'll be beautiful and it's like well you're still not beautiful enough to actually win the contest <laughs> and like i said the one woman who didn't want that much surgery she's just like look like i was down she's like I haven't won a lot of things. She was like, I got competitive, and then I lost to my friend. So, I mean, and also, I will say, in defense of the people that started it, like, you're trying to get ratings. Yeah. I think they thought, so. you know, like, because the plastic surgeon guy, he doesn't know that the trainer's putting him through paces every day. The trainer doesn't know how much plastic surgery he's doing. So, I mean, it's, it's one of those things where it's like, I, I kind of get most angles of it. Yeah. It's a very good show, but at the end of the day, like the the premise itself was to try to make these people feel better. They only did two series or two years, by the way. The first year, the ratings were through the roof. The second year, nobody really cared, and then they canceled it. But like the trainer left, I think one of the plastic surgeons left. He was like, "This Jeez. is insanity. Yeah. What you're doing to these women? Like, we can't do that anymore." Uh, I don't often, and I, it's not. I'm not picking up a new another sport. But it's not often we talk about. I talk about tennis. Kind of exciting uh, in the in the semifinal of the men's championship. You will have two Americans, mm -hmm. right? And uh, Tifo, big foe. He's uh, right around the. Yeah, he's a big Maryland guy. Went to University of Maryland. Grew up in the same area I did. So I'm, I'm cheering for him. Last night I was watching that, and the other guy got hurt, so he had to retire. And I was like. All right, it's kind of like a cheap win, but I'll take it. Miles, you've seen it. Once that guy kind of tweaked his hamstring, oh, Big yeah. Foe was just hammering him. Yeah. Right? Finally, like, even I was like, just tell the guy to quit. Mm -hmm. This looks pathetic. <laughs> Thank you, Ted. We appreciate it. You're listening to the men's room. It's better over here. Now at T-Mobile, get four 5G phones on us and four lines for $25 a line per month when you switch with eligible trade-ins. All on America's largest 5G network. <laughs> Minimum of four lines for $25 per line per month with auto pay discount using debit or bank account. $5 more per line without auto pay, plus taxes and fees and $10 device connection charge. Phones via 24 monthly bill credits for well-qualified customers. Contact us before canceling entire account to continue bill credits or credit stop and balance on required finance agreement due. Bill credits end if you pay off devices early. Ctmobile.com. You're working from home. You settle in with a cup of coffee, ready to get the day started. Before you look at that to-do list, turn on your favorite Odyssey sports station on your smart speaker. We'll keep you company and bring you the latest updates from your teams while you tackle your inbox or get ready for another meeting that probably could have been an email. 
power through the workday with the entertaining sports coverage you love from the local voices you trust. Just ask your smart speaker to play your favorite station. The Men's Room returns with Miles and Thrill. Now, let's see what's happening in the real world. All right, here we go. The commander of a Navy destroyer is now learning the full scope of his mistake. A Florida surgeon removes a patient's wrong organ and his life he did take. Meanwhile, Florida man compliments another car before getting punched in the face. A neighborhood cat goes to people's homes to ransack the place. And a man duct tapes a city tree to keep it from falling on his house. It is time for your headlines. Now, it's time to hit the head. Lines. Here's my car. All right, top seven, we got to Florida where you can't say anything nice anymore. In a video that is making the rounds online, we get dash cam footage featuring the filming car stopped in the middle of the road behind a Dodge Challenger. Preceding the video, the one driving the car taking the video revealed that uh, he had waved at the Challenger driver, letting him know that he had a nice car. The driver of the Challenger responded by stopping in the middle of the road, approaching the car behind him, and then punching his complimenter in the face. That's what when the, the hell? That's when the video starts where we can hear various swear words and threats by the sports car driver with the victim trying to tell him that he was only saying that he liked his car. The man then drove off without further conflict, but it uh, but was not home when police, police arrived at his house, so they're asking anyone with information on his whereabouts to come forward. Basic, <sighs> the guy thought that he was insulting him in some way. Because he said, nice car. But it is New Jersey, so. Right. Because he was saying something like, you know, you want to you clap at it, you want to go. So it's like, no, dude, I, I, I like your car. But he responded immediately by just punching him right in the face. Come on, man. Come on, man. Can Relax. We, can we not respond with fists first? Can we, can we assume a little bit of the good in people? The guy said, nice car. And he didn't say nice car. He waved at him. Oh, that was it? Yeah. Oh, Jesus. Or something like uh, that. Maybe he did even say nice car. Either way. I can't imagine he had any kind of a threatening look to him or, or an insulting look to him. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's wild. Damn, dude. In other news, in Richmond, Virginia, a local resident is at a loss for what to do about a dangerous situation. Steve, I don't feel like you could relate to this at all. He's got a tree that was planted by the sidewalk on his property and even remembers the day that the city officials came and planted it, having enjoyed its growth throughout the years. But now it's grown so tall and awkwardly that it has actually begun to split down the middle. Fearing ensuing damages at his expense, the man put up signs warning drivers not to park underneath the tree and has even resorted to wrapping it with duct tape in an attempt to keep it from falling. He's informed the city about the situation, informing them that if it falls, it's a danger to cars, pedestrians, and mainly three houses on the block. But he has yet to uh, see any action on their part. Well, I mean, at least in his case, and it is frustrating. The difference he has, it's just bureaucracy. So it's going to take right. the city a hot minute to do any things. That's how things work. Seattle straight up like, no, we're not cutting down that tree. Right. We're not <laughs> going to do it. Then they have these phony arborists that they sent up there. Oh, the tree's perfectly fine. Like, the, the tree's not fine. And like I said, in the end, I was right, yes. as were my neighbors. I mean, it doesn't you don't have to be a genius to figure out a tree growing at like a 70-degree angle that's about 75 feet tall, weighs whatever that weighs. It's going to come down. Not only did it come down, it landed exactly. I'm, I'm positive where she, we could, she could sue their ass. I believe they could. You could, but the problem is, and so she thought about it, And but the issue is this. Seattle has your money. Sure. right. Seattle does not have its money, but you are taxed, and so they have your money, and so it feels weird to fight a lawsuit, and they're going to put up all their lawyers and everything to yeah. drag this thing out. And in the end, she's spending a bunch of her money just to prove that she was correct. Right. Which was yeah. the tree fell. In the exact direction we said it would fall. Right. So, with this guy's bureaucracy, with us, as far as Seattle goes, that's because they're stupid. And they do not care. Yeah. I mean, that's the long and short of it. Back to Florida, where a surgeon is in some hot water. A 70-year-old man from Alabama was admitted to the hospital after experiencing pains in his side that turned out to be complications with his spleen. Needing a surgery to have uh, the organ removed, the man was taken in and operated laparoscopically. But complications soon, soon took hold with an uncontrollable bleed due to a nicked artery during the procedure. Because the surgeon had uh, mistakenly removed his liver instead of his spleen. Uh, mm. Ah, man. The patient did pass there on the operating table, and his widow is now seeking charges against the surgeon. Hmm. Yeah, I think that's fair. That's that's pretty fair there. He straight up removed the wrong thing. So. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty bad. Yeah, kind of need that. 
kind of need that. Mm -hmm. Down to San Diego where a change in command has occurred. The Navy told the local media that the commanding officer of the destroyer USS John McCain had been relieved of duty, explaining that it was, quote, due to a loss of confidence in his ability to command the guided missile destroyer. Though it doesn't detail it in the statement, it's not lost on anybody that this comes four months after he was featured in a photo that was shared by the Marine Corps, which was ridiculing him for aiming down a rifle with the scope attached backwards. Hmm. I, I'll be honest with you. I, that photo is so bad. I didn't think it was real. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's very real. It's Oh, yeah. It's real. <laughs> it was bad. You think that's why they relieved him of his command? That That's kind of what people are, are floating well, he on. he posted it originally, right? And then I think the, all the Navy. Marines were like, yeah, good call, Na- like, Navy dude. Like, your scope's on backwards. Right. Because I think he was trying to, like, you know. Look, so everything's so far bad. away. Right. Just trying to I look can't read the name of the ship I'm on. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> That's excellent. That's exactly what we need to do. Also, I don't know if there is. Is there rules of just firing rounds into the water in international water? In international I don't know. Water, international water is kind of nobody asks questions. That's the whole point. You know what I mean? Get what's it, 20, 23 miles off the coast of a country? And in theory, you're an international water with Captain Hanks. I'll leave it at that. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I, that'd be my thought on it. But I, I'm not a lawyer. I don't know. But just in case those stories left a bad taste in your mouth. Thankfully, there's good news. In West Yorkshire, England, they finally nabbed a thief. A local neighborhood had been plagued with a sticky-fingered individual that had helped themselves to all sorts of other people's belongings, mainly clothing, even underwear that belonged to residents in the area, the sicko. Luckily for the community, they didn't have to look far for the one responsible, as it was nothing more than a family cat by the name of Taboo who roams the neighborhood and takes home whatever she finds interesting enough to bring home. Her owner tells the media that she comes home from a long day of work to find all sorts of new treasures to upload onto the internet for their rightful owners to come and claim, with the neighborhood finding the funny side of things and taking an overall good attitude about it. Mm. Which you gotta love. That's a good time. <laughs> Men's Room Sports. The Seattle Mariners. In full dumpster mm. fire mode, mm. dropped mm. another mm. walk-off last night against the A's to remove the chance of winning the series. They'll play uh, game three of four tonight at uh, 640 over on route with George Kirby getting the start. You still think, uh, are you still going to say thank you to uh, DePoto? DePoto? DePoto. I mean, Wasn't yeah. that him a few months ago? They should Fans should be thanking us. They should be. Yeah. Thank DePoto. I don't think they're, what, what was his percentage? 57? 57, yeah. yeah I, don't, I don't think they got better. Yeah. I'm just going to leave it at that. You said fans should be thanking us? Yeah. Somebody else from the they, organization won an award locally and said, you guys, you can stop waiting. Like we're really going for it. Then he can He comes out like a week or two later, and is like, they should be thanking us for taking our time building a World Series championship yeah. organization. They should be happy with fifty-seven percent. Yeah. Or maybe you should thank the fans yeah. who hang in there through all the season after season after season. As far as your weather, it's summer's last hurrah. Temperatures are going to dip down to about 60 tonight before the uh, the skies open up and shine that beautiful ball of helium upon us one final time, bringing in temperatures all the way up to the high 80s with some reports Ooh. claiming that Ooh. we might just make it up Ooh. and over 90. Ooh. And that is if your head lies with that, Mike Hawk is out. Hey, sir, we appreciate it. We'll see you next time for the return of Big Dummy. The head chef's back with Ted's meat and potatoes. The lovely Jolie is up next. Yes, indeed, it's all true, but in the meantime, well... We be all about this bitch. So until next time, please do what you do best. And for Aletha's sake, stay beautiful. The men's room has been taped before a live studio audience. Wardrobe and makeup provided by Mantastic Limited. This has been a presentation of the Men's Room Radio Network. Oh man! A double flush production. This episode is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Whether you love true crime or comedy, celebrity interviews or news, you call the shots on what's in your podcast queue. And guess what? Now you can call them on your auto insurance too with the Name Your Price tool from Progressive. It works just the way it sounds. You tell Progressive how much you want to pay for car insurance and they'll show you coverage options that fit your budget. Get your quote today at Progressive.com to join the over 28 million drivers who trust Progressive. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Price and coverage match limited by state law. Hey, it's Doug. Suicide is something that affects all of us, and we can all play a part in saving lives. Make a difference in your community by walking out of the darkness with us on Sunday, October 13th at Fisher Pavilion at Seattle Center. Help spread awareness and understanding. Send the message that help is available 
and raise funds for the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. Register today at AFSP.org slash Seattle. That's AFSP.org slash Seattle. Presented by T-Mobile, the official wireless partner of Odyssey Sports. With an awesome network and great savings, there's never been a better time to join T-Mobile. Visit your neighborhood store to make the switch today. The best thing about the Seattle International Auto Show is everything. It's the best place to turn questions into answers. Compare the newest models from major manufacturers. Gas power, hybrid, and EV all under one roof. See them, touch them, drive them at the Seattle International Auto Show presented by BECU. Live at Lumen Field Event Center, Thursday through Sunday, November 14th through 17th. Discover your drive. For tickets and info, visit seattleautoshow.com today.